need to understand that what we're doing today, we will not be trying to we will we will not be trying to seduce anybody. We are just going to talk in a very in a very different format. Uh, but of course, this is um, Ike Evelyn's first time using um, a binaural microphone, not by choice, of course. Uh, I have tried using my, a binaural microphone. It's just that when I got it, like I sent you the sample, and it was like severely deep fried for mm-hmm. some reason. I actually did speak with the people that manufacture it, and like they said that they were going to send me a replacement. I don't think I've gotten it, it yet, so... Sometimes these things happen. I remember I um, I really wanted to get into Guilty Gear at one point, and I ordered uh, a fight stick uh, from online, and it turns out that I gave them, like, I messed up my address info. Like, I gave them the wrong postcode, but the right address. And so they just never sent it to me, and I lost track of it and forgot about it, and since then I've kind of lost interest. And so <laughs> that fight stick is somewhere in the world. Somebody in the world has a box out comes fight stick. <laughs> People saying you're a little quiet. We have the same... Uh, I think maybe I just have to speak a little quieter. It's because e e. <laughs> uh, this this is strange. Oh, like this, this is the voices on the wrong ear. They're saying I'm gonna I'm gonna swap us over. Hang on. We could always just like flip the the output. I I know how to do that. You're a smarter man than I. Oh okay. <laughs> there we go. Hey better. I was about to say, like, like in order for it to be accurate, you need, kind of need to, like... Oh, yeah. True. I didn't even think about that. I never really... I never really think too hard about which input I'm putting the cables into. I just kind of put them in and pray for the best. I mean... Will I be safe if I don't use earphones? I mean, will you? Will you? I don't know. So we, don't, we don't have a plan for today. We're just here to, we're just here to discuss... More or less... Bro is shuffling. <laughs> I was trying to get the, get the chair closer. <laughs> I think both our voices are kind of shot right now. A little bit, yeah. I think it was, um, I was drinking a lot last night, and um, I was also, ye- like, yelling quite a bit. <laughs> so, do you, do you also get that thing, like, if you have a lot of alcohol, like, the, the morning after, like, your voice is just, like, real, in a really bad state? Mm, oh god yeah no i get that all, i get that all the time i think i've learned to monopolize it though because my when my voice is shot it sounds nice in, in a different way and so i just kind of have learned to accept that that's how it how it is that's how it's gonna be that's who i am as a person yeah like i, I remember i had like a members uh chatting stream a while ago like, the day after i had way too much red bull vodka the, the, the night before and uh, it, it was just Jojo voice the entire stream. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. I often get that. Like sometimes, sometimes you'll just sort of you'll wake up, you'll wake up slowly, and then you'll realize like, oh, it's not gonna be that day. And you go on stream, and you're like, hey guys, what's up? I said, you sound kind of, kind of like uh, those. Uh, Wanna be thirst traps on TikTok. Why do guys get so bloody pressed when a when a gay guy hits on them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um. <laughs> Jesus, that was loud. Sorry, <laughs> I was trying to do the sound, but you can't do it too quietly. <laughs> How did you can introduce to someone? Like, how do you remember how you came across it? For I the first do, time? I do. So uh, a long, a long time ago, um, I was kind of like I was kind of offering like my voice for sort of petty change, like random little local things, like somebody's grandma is doing a, an advert for her website, and I would um, and I would like do the voiceover for that and stuff. And I had a friend who one day came up to me and she said, "Esma." And I was like, what? I thought she was joking. I legitimately thought she was joking because my perception of ASMR at the time was like, my perception of ASMR at the time was just like, hey guys. Whoa, that's wild. Today, we're going to be writing fan fiction. You know, and like, that was just, that was just kind of all I perceived it to be. And she was like, no, I think you'd be good at it. You should give it a try. And so I genuinely, I seriously was like, you know what? I'm gonna give this a go. And this was like, 
God, this must have been about four or five years ago. Now. Yeah, five years ago. I just started making it for myself. Like, I didn't, um, I didn't send it to anybody. I just kind of kept it to myself, and I just started, like, making little stories. I did not have an ASMR mic. I just had a regular mic. And it became more, and I think it definitely informed the kind of ASMR that I make now, because what I was doing was I was, like, just writing a story or, like, a little thing, and then kind of, you know, and then and then and then just and then just reading it out. They would only ever reach like four or five minutes long because I didn't know that in ASMR you can afford to have really long pauses between bits of dialogue. I just kind of made it like more of an audio drama, really. Mm. Um, and then it kind of that. And so now when I make ASMR, that tends to be what I do. I just sort of like use ASMR as a trick, like a Trojan horse, to smuggle like a story I want to tell to the, to more viewers who are interested in ASMR. Does anybody remember the night? ASMR, where it, everyone was expecting um, kind of a soft romance with some wound dressing or something, and then you had to watch him die in your arms. Uh, that was spoilers. That was great. Well, and everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna listen to it. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Have I ever li- the, the only ASMR I have viewers I've ever listened to was the off collab with Mista. Oh yeah, but I mean, I think I forgot to turn. I had it on mono audio and. Um, and so it was more. It was more just like a. It was more of just like a podcast with slightly more sensitive audio, but it was fun. Yeah, I remember when you cracked the drink open and you blew the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Do, I did do that, didn't I? Wait, can I can I try something I've always wanted to try? Yeah, yeah. That's wild. Oh Jesus, <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> Look in, look in chat. Bicycle. <laughs> bicycle. Bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. I like, want to ride my bike. There was, a, it was so funny, because like the when I did it, it was like a gentle gust, and then was you, when it was you, it was just a hurricane. <laughs> I think that's I think that's the problem with me is that because I don't listen to ASMR, sometimes I um, sometimes I just sort of forget like what sounds are actually good and which ones are bad when i tried doing normal asmr it was mostly just me struggling to make slime the entire time and then at the beginning i I was like people like eating asmr right and so i just had like a chicken sandwich and i just shoved it in my mouth and was like you know and everyone was like i can't do it i can't do it they tell me when he stops (laughs) (laughs) put fingers in your ears tell me when it's over if you want to try triggers that actually learns japanese onomatopoeia it's actually really good oh really yeah, uh, like, uh, I don't know exactly what it means, but uh, sk, sk, actually uh, works really well. So if you, if you just make that noise and like alternate <laughs> from ear to ear, I'm not joking. It actually works mm-hmm. as a trigger. So wait, how would I, how, why don't we try that now? How would I do that? Like, I think it's just written as S K S K. So it's just like sk, 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 and then sk, and you just sk, gently sk, hold it. Sk, sk, sk. Stan Twitter laughing at the moment. Skis, 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 skis. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Skis, 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 skis. Hang on. I'm going to skis. 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 Remember Visco? I've thing is, I've never looked at Visco. I don't know what it looks like. I've just heard legends oh my of God. the Visco girls. Visco girls was my favorite thing. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> trolling someone mm-hmm. when he's just like uh, doing the Twitter like <laughs> and then he just goes and flicks a like a glass oh yeah oh like wait do I do we I, I, I don't oh there's a little I don't think it would make I don't think it would make there's a glass bottle I don't think it would make the same sound but yeah and then he just goes mm, mm. it's like a Cat. It's 
funny sound. It is a funny sound. Um, going back to like the whole origin, like one's first exposure to ASMR. Mm-hmm. Uh, thinking back, the first time I ever saw ASMR was when I was way younger because there was a real like this was back in the day when you when sharing like emails with funny attachment was mm-hmm. still kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, one thing that got sent around was something called the Virtual Barber Shop. Mm. And it was like, it was, I think this was way before ASMR was even a term, where they r- rigged up like a bunch of microphones and they have like uh, some dude named Luigi that's supposed to cut, <laughs> cut your hair. And I, I, I'm not joking. I think his name was actually Luigi. Yeah, and it's, it's actually a really, really well done ASMR thing. Mm. Like, where like they, you can f- like feel them going around your head and everything. And there's one point where he leans in and whispers into your ear, and whatnot. That was the first time I ever heard it. Then like nothing for years upon years upon years. And then <laughs> I I was just perusing YouTube one day, mm-hmm. and I was just watching like a bunch of um, anime weeb stuff as 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 I usually do. Mm-hmm. But the algorithm worked way different back then. And, like, sometimes you would get the Wild West of recommendations, right? You you, you know this era, right? Where, like, you would get the wildest things in your recommendation. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. If it was just even, like, related, like, ten, like, on a tangent or whatever. And I see a video with, like, the thumbnail was just a very nice illustration, but, like sort of like a mix between anime and uh, like realism of like a character like arresting their finger on their lips just like sort of like not really seductive but it definitely like (laughs) 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 Um, like it wasn't suggestive or anything but like you could definitely like see it that way Mm -hmm. and I look at the title and it was so bizarre and I was so confused that you know it's kind of like a car crash you can't look away Mm -hmm. so I just click on it and like ASMR wasn't mentioned nowhere and then it was just I didn't know what it was but it was what it said on the cap because (laughs) it was like an ear eating thing (laughs) and I was so mortified like with the things that I was hearing there was like a really just like very soft spoken like a very pleasant voice and but then eventually they just got to business and I was like uh, oh god <laughs> 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 and for whatever reason like that was like the first time I ever was like exposed to like proper quote unquote modern mm-hmm. ASMR instead of that vintage barbershop thing and I, I forget when I first ran into the, the actual term ASMR, but I think I found something else that was in, not in the same vein, but I think was from like either the same artist or company, because I think these were like things that you bought. Mm-hmm. This was just a sample that was like available on some website. And then it was like more narrative driven and like story driven. And then it actually had the ASMR tag. I'm like, what is mm-hmm. ASMR? And then I looked it up and was like, oh, oh God. <laughs> so after that, I just kind of discovered a, like a bunch of things. Like there was this one ASMR channel that I used to watch with this lovely, lovely handsome man who would just do your makeup or like oh. cut your hair and everything. And like he would also have like a video along with it, oh. and it was like the audio was so accurate. And like it would, like it, I remember when I was first starting this stuff. It, I, you don't get the tingles, do you? Not really, no. Because because I do, and I remember when I did, like it was it was scary how how much I t- like the tingles were, like I would actually just lay down on my couch and like shiver my timbers, <laughs> shiver me timbers, yeah, you shiver me timbers. It was so pleasant. I don't know what that must feel like because I just don't get that from anything. Maybe I haven't found the right sound yet, but when it comes to like there are so many different sounds where it just like it will either make me kind of uncomfortable. Or I just will feel nothing, you know. Mm. The thing, the thing with me, once I got used to like the concept of ASMR, I th- there's few things like in the genre that actually makes me uncomfortable, at least sound-wise. Mm. For me, the worst one. I remember someone as a joke once sent me ASMR of a woman eating an aloe vera plant, <laughs> <laughs> and 
and it was just the most like stickiest like like it's awful the, 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 like it made me so uncomfortable <laughs> I don't know why, but the fact that it's specifically Lothar makes yeah. it really funny. <laughs> mm. How do you feel about this? I won't say it out loud. Hmm? You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> like, like that... Can I get a few words? <laughs> can, can I get a few words? That's so loud. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. Can I do that? <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I don't know. How do you do that so fast? You just, I don't know. It's like a breath. I don't, I don't know how to breathe properly. It's like a breath. Oh, my God. No, we need to, we need to send Ike to breathing school. <laughs> breathing school. How do you do? I can't. I think I, it's like, okay, so you like have to really tense up your, um. what, what would you call this? Is that like your, your abs? Your, your oh, tense oh up that your, actually works. Come on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. You got it. You tense up. This is the first time I have ever given someone like a voice lesson and it makes sense and it works. <laughs> Except that it sounded like a machine gun. <laughs> I, I was. Can I? Can I tell you about something I I came across this morning? So, um, I've never watched a single episode of this. <laughs> got that dog in me. Like, no, you've got that dog in you too. Oh, dang. So I've never watched a single episode of any of these shows, but all of the CW DC shows ended. Um, CW what? The, the, um, it's like a TV channel that has these really, like, low-budget DC shows, like Green Arrow, uh, The Flash, uh, oh. Supergirl, and all that kind of stuff. We've all seen... Like those. Uh, they, yeah, they, 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 they were liked by, like, their fan base, but I had never watched any of them. I saw a clip from one this morning from, I think it's called like Legends of Tomorrow or Heroes of Tomorrow or something like that. And the plot is, they so a villain called Gorilla Grodd, who is just a sentient but normal ass gorilla who is very large. They say, they say Gorilla Grodd, he's going after Barry. And they're like, and of course Barry Allen is the Flash, right? And they're like, right. oh, well, I mean, you know, how is it? Gorilla Grodd is never going to be able to catch him. And, you know, that'll be, that'll be fine. He's like, well... I'm talking about a different Barry. And it cuts this young man in his university dorm who's working on a little essay, and Gorilla Grodd busts down the door. Huge, terrifying CGI gorilla with his big teeth, and he says, Barack Obama, it would almost be an honor to kill you. What? The rest of the episode is Gorilla Grodd chasing down a young Barack Obama from the 70s. <laughs> This is the only thing from what this was show. going. Like, I just no, know that I don't know. that the writers' room was like a ball in that day. They were, they were having so much fun. This is one of those like writers' things where it's like if the budget gets cut or one of their favorite ideas gets denied, they just make the next episode as hilarious and stupid as they possibly can. Or uh, a lot of people make the most out of their budget because, like, I don't know if you remember the story of like what happened with Walking Dead season two. I don't know much. I know that Walking Dead season two was much worse than Ye season one. Yeah, because like the obviously the Walking Dead season one like pr pretty pretty stellar television. Like it was, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was the one, but I think it was the one that like sort of kick started the whole giving television like more of a sort of like a blockbuster budget. Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, I think it was spearheaded by Frank Darabont. A uh, guy who directed The Mist and Shawshank Redemption and Green Mile, and uh, so like obviously he knows, mm -hmm. um, like uh, he, he knows a lot of people and a lot of people just uh, who really really like um, big A list actors working well below their pay grade just because they wanted to work with Frank because like he's a, such a pleasant guy to work with. Mm -hmm. But then with season two, like uh, I think AMC like cut their budget something awful, and uh, they wanted to save money on zombie makeup because the zombie makeup was like really expensive mm -hmm. and extensive looked great in season one but in season two like a lot of the makeup is you could noticeably a lot worse <laughs> and apparently amc wanted to just instead of showing the zombies can can the viewer just hear them is uh, actually <laughs> he just he just face palmed <laughs> can they just hear the zombies imagine a zombie show that shows no zombies i mean listen you can just hear them off screen there was a film that did that um very well 
which was Dunkirk. I don't know if you've ever seen Dunkirk, but no. it's a war movie from the perspective of the British soldiers trying to escape from Dunkirk in France, and you never see the the Germans, like you never see the enemy a single time. Their bullet the planes fly overhead, and like the bullets fly like onto screen and stuff like that, but you never see them a single time, and it makes it feel a lot more sort of immersive it's and a, scary. But it's a Christopher Nolan movie. Isn't Christopher it? Nolan, yeah, yeah. But then, then, it, then it's obviously a stylistic choice. Oh, it's a hundred percent stylistic, and it works incredibly well. The difference is, I don't, I don't know if these random like, if The Walking Dead really has that Christopher Nolan level of you know, of intention. <laughs> I mean, it was still Frank Darabont. He was trying his best, but then they fired him. Oh, of course they did. It's always like it's always these big studios that like whenever they get a genuinely brilliant filmmaker, they kind of squander what they're able to bring to it. Like, um, do you know that Edgar Wright was originally supposed to make Ant Man? Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's, there's one scene in the movie where you can really tell that like this was not written by the current director. Like, they, mm -hmm. um, I, I think he said something along the lines of they didn't want they wanted one of their movies they they did not want an Edgar Wright movie and if you don't want a movie made by me why did you hire me that's so true that's why he walked and that's also one of the reasons why I think Ant-Man 1 is way better than Ant-Man 2 and 3 because they've admitted there are lots of elements of Edgar Wright's original script and a lot of his ideas that are still in that film he's just not credited for any of them so I think that's why like I genuinely think Ant-Man 1 is a lot of fun yeah and I like Ant-Man Ant 2 is like Nothing fucking happens. I, it's I'm, so boring. The, uh, I powered through Ant Man two for one reason and one reason only. You know what? Want to know why? Why? It was the first movie after Infinity War. True. You want to know what's going to happen next? And yeah, and, and, yeah. And out of everything, like you, something that follows up on Infinity War, it's thirty seconds at the end. Yep. And it is a good post credit scene, but it's like that's the entire the entire movie. I sat through just so much of nothing, and then saw the end credit scene. It was like, oh, great. Okay. <laughs> I've heard Ant Man three is also pretty bad. Yeah, I actually haven't seen him. I've sort of fall like after Endgame, I sort of fell off the yeah, Marvel me too. Chain. I the, think my one exception is Spider Man because Spider Man's great because I love Spider Man. Spider Man was really really good. I think overall Phase four and five so far have been pretty pretty trash. Um, so we're just waiting to see what happens next. I mean, I maybe also watched uh, that latest Doctor Strange one. What was I thought that was really bad. Multiverse of Madness. I did not like it. I thought it was really bad. Yeah, I, there was a few things I enjoyed, but I enjoy. Uh, Scarlet Witch. I enjoy Wanda, mm. Wanda's character a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I well, the thing about the thing about Scarlet Witch, and I feel like I would enjoy it if it wasn't for WandaVision. I don't know if you've seen WandaVision. I have seen WandaVision. Do you remember? So in WandaVision, like she is somewhat of a villain in that show, yeah. but she has such like an arc to sort of accepting that her I family is like, gone. You, and all of that. you get it. Like, you, could, you, mm -hmm. could you imagine yourself in her shoes? Like, the, like you have the ability to sort of almost entirely like gaslight yourself into thinking that everything is fine mm -hmm. it's like it, it's it's a it's a tempting thing to do even though it's a mixed bag like there are some parts of WandaVision that I think it could do without I think it's my favorite thing from Marvel personally I really really enjoyed it the problem is is that you they have spent uh, some eight episodes eight or ten or however many episodes giving Wanda like this huge arc and her sort of going from being a terrifying villain who constructs this huge town just to keep the illusion that her husband is still alive um, and then and then in and then she sort of she does really really grow and then in Multiverse of Madness she's just a cartoon villain yeah it, it felt like they just forgot that, w that WandaVision happened you know I mean it still carries over somewhat but I think they go a bit too the one thing I didn't like about it was that because we're s like obviously we're still meant to like sympathize with her and like believe in her redemption but I don't know after mass murder it's kind of let it dead like well, where do you draw the line uh, yeah and um I mean really the one part of it and I feel like an idiot because it's so like typical but the one part of it that I really enjoyed was the part where she like you know is the part where she kills the the Illuminati? What like the, the, uh, the, the Reed, X Men? Reed, Reed Richards and um and uh, Black Bolt and all those guys. And I, also, uh, isn't Charles Xavier also there? He is. Yeah. And then she that, that was such a waste. You you finally you had, get you back. You had Patrick Stewart Patrick back, and then he Stewart just instantly gets his neck just, snapped. Come what? on, like come on, come on. I 
remember when I watched in the cinema and they said we have to take you to see the Illuminati I couldn't stop laughing I know that's a thing from the comics but I was just in hysterics thinking of them just suddenly name dropping the Illuminati I half expected the X-Files theme to start playing <laughs> that's also a thing that like also works really well for triggers for like He's like he's like he's got a new toy for Christmas and he's he's, he's playing around with it. <laughs> it's I'm, I'm very jealous about like other people's experience with ASMR because some people have sort of sent me like super chats and stuff while I'm doing ASMR saying like yeah I I get like this this phantom touch thing where like when you touch the ears it's like they physically feel like they're I, being I touched. I kind of get that because um, yeah, I used to play a lot of VR chat. And uh, I always heard this thing about phantom touch. And I, for the longest time, I thought it was just people, like, just sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, living out in a, like, a fantasy world, just sort of a shared, like, play pretend. Like, obviously that's not real. It's just a bunch of baloney. And whenever people mm -hmm. talked about it, I thought it was kind of cringe. Mm -hmm. And then, like, once I started, like, spending a lot of time in VR chat and full body tracking, I still didn't get anything. But there was one time when there was somebody that wanted to, like, make me uncomfortable. So they, what they had was, like, they had, like, a, uh, their entire uh, avatar was invisible except for their hand that had a spider on it. Mm. And they just put the spider, like, slowly so that it slowly crawled down my face because they wanted, they wanted to make me uncomfortable. And, but I didn't want to give them that, so I, I just acted calm. But what I did notice, when it was going down my face, it actually, I had tingling feeling uh, on my face. And that's when I realized, holy crap, phantom touch is actually kind of a thing. Because after that, whenever somebody would like gently brush their hand down my face like that, or trace like the ridge of my nose, I would feel like a tingling sensation there. So I'm like, how... What what's the science behind this? How is this a thing? This should not be a thing. It's definitely like a, a psychological thing. Also, really good request. Mm -hmm. Can you say something in Swedish in our ears? Uh, okay, I have the perfect thing. Go for it. Shut the bullar är jättegoda och kostnadseffektiva. Does anybody know what that what that meant? It means that meatballs are delicious and cost effective. <laughs> thinking you had said something genuinely like like seductive or something like that but no he's just he's just out here trying to do his I'm out here I'm out here doing press for Ikea Mr. Ikea is arrived <laughs> really really because of your name Ikea of Lind, like yeah Ikea of Lind, it sounds like Ikea it does doesn't sense. it like yeah. you are like the Colonel Sanders of Ikea <laughs> Then why am I not in the ads? Well, they, 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 because they're sleeping on you. They're sleeping yeah, on they, you. Yeah, they really are. They really you've are. Yet, you've yet to enter your prime. One of these days, you're going to hit, like, such a stride. You're going to release, like, you know, a ton of music, and everyone's going to love by, it. By the way, Blue Light, Sunday. Blue Light, it's coming out on Sunday, everybody. And then one day, you're going to get an email, and they're going to want you to market IKEA, and it's going to be, it's, and, it, and, and the rest will be history. God, yeah, I, I was so happy that because like my colors scheme worked out well with that because like m my name sounded like Ikea my color scheme was like blue and yellow mm -hmm. so before debut everybody was making the Ikea jokes I'm like yes it worked perfect <laughs> so when I actually debut and people see like one of my languages was Swedish and everybody was like Ikea is real I was like yes <laughs> just as planned <laughs> Kei Kakudori the Ikea is real um I mean, it's not too far off because we've already been Colonel Sanders. Have we? Yeah, KFC. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh yeah, remember when you were really drunk that one time and you texted me and like, like with <laughs> no context a picture of me from the KFC collab and it just said Vox Akuma underneath it with <laughs> no <laughs> context <laughs> because you were that. you were so drunk. <laughs> it was a really really drunk. Yeah, I wonder if I can still find it. I. <laughs> I think I, th I think I just texted you and said, "Ike, I'm so drunk. Help!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That's the only thing. It was you like said. four in the morning. <laughs> Boom. 
Mm -hmm. I saw a couple of people say Nihongo Yabai. Yeah, that, that's one thing. Japanese ASMR hits different. Does it really? Yeah, because it, it has something to do with how their syllables or their syllabary are, is constructed. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just really like well suited for like for getting the the trigger tingles. <laughs> I found it. I found it. I said I said Michael, I'm so fucking drunk, what do I do? And I sent the Biden blast image. <laughs> <laughs> You've done well, kid, but uh, so far I've only been using a mere five percent of my power. Now get ready for my Biden blast. Juarida. And then you when you hear like the, the, the pew sound effect, you just hear him going, Yeah in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, they need if I if I ruled the world, I would make legislation that the only thing you can use generative AI for is to make funny memes. Yeah. Non profit, non commercial, just make because that's the only thing I think it's ever done that's been fun and good for people is just making everybody laugh. Like look at this shit, you know, like <laughs> that, like like Joe Biden's voice. That was such a great trend for a little while, and you know, or like the the little AI generated images of like Joe powering up like a Kamehameha or whatever it is. It's like that's pretty cool. Obamehameha. Obamehameha. It's definitely more powerful than the Biden blast. You know, it was really funny. Like when I was playing. Yeah like Persona 5 the other day, they had like a um, uh, question about like a Hawaii mm -hmm. and, and about King Kamehameha. So when I saw that, all I could think of was the Obamehameha. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, that is a guy's name. I remember Yeah, King, King Kamehameha. King Kamehameha. What, what, where was he from? Where was he from? Hawaii? Hawaii. Yes, that was it. I remember from, um, I think he's a leader in like Civ 6 or something like that. Yeah. Something along those lines, yeah. What was the other one? Like, we have Biden Blast, Obama, Hameha. Does Trump have any? Um, uh, oh, uh, a small loan of a million fists. I'm just, I'm just imagining like some sort of slight, <sighs> slightly off-looking AI-generated Donald Trump with like 300 different fists appearing, <laughs> appearing around him. Also, speaking, speaking of which, I just remembered another line from the Gorilla Grodd chasing down Obama episode. When he finally corners him, he says, "I will make, uh, I will make America Grodd again." What the heck? <laughs> I can't Is believe they green like that. It's so silly. I mean, at that point, they know. They're just being goofy. They're just fucking around. Yeah, and like, it, it makes a world of a difference when you can tell what, mm -hmm. that they're just having fun. I think that's nice. It's like, it's like this is one of my favorite things about um, the Monty Python movies, yeah. right? Like, Welcome to the middle of the film. <laughs> <laughs> like, because you can tell at every moment on set, they were just goofing around, like with the rabbit scene, where they were like, oh, go in, go in, charge. And then they instantly see it kill one person, like, run away, run away. <laughs> Uh, or the um, the dance scene where I was like, we, we shall join my knights in my court at Camelot, and it cuts to a really weird musical number where we're knights of the round table, we dance whenever we're able, uh, and all of that kind of stuff. And then he just says, on, on second thoughts, perhaps we shall not go to Camelot. This is it is a silly place. And then one of the one of the squires says, oh, it's only a model because it's just a <laughs> it's, oh yeah, because it's they just break a, the, a castle in the distance. Like it's only a model. Break the fourth wall like that. I love that kind of thing. Or the one where there's so many good bits. The best one. The best one. You know, relevant is the is the fact that at the beginning of the film, someone just in, in all of the credits, the opening credits, that they just keep adding a fake like moose character to the credits, and it's always someone like someone like the with with random Swedish letters like the umlauts and the yeah. little what's the line through the O? 
Uh, oh, that's not for Swedish, actually. That's Is it in, not? That's in Denmark and Norway. Oh, well, it proves then that they were off their ship because they were talking about Sweden, but they were just using the wrong the wrong characterization. But they just kept saying, like, uh, a funny moose from the woods and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> like, it would just keep going. They would add more and more, and suddenly the credits go. It's like, those responsible for the sacking of sacking of the moose creditor have also now been sacked. Uh, we we will, we have now given we have now given control over to the League of Llamas, and then the rest of it is like a full blown epilepsy warning. It's just flashing bright colors, and it says directed by Llama One, written by Llama Number Two, and all of that. And then it, the movie, and then the movie just starts. I, I love things like that, especially when they're subtle with it. Well, I was I was rewatching Tenacious D and mm-hmm. the Pick of Destiny recently, and uh, I, I I never noticed this before, but like you know the, like the cafe that they stop by. Mm-hmm. Like before they go and have their heist at the the, yeah, yeah. the museum of rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, do you know what it's what that cafe is called? No. It's called the halfway cafe. <laughs> and, and it's it, halfway through the movie. Yeah, it's exactly halfway through nice. the movie. I always love the little details like that. Like there are some movies where there'll be like a timer, like we have fifteen minutes to complete the mission, and then <laughs> the mission is completed like literally exactly fifteen minutes oh, yeah, later it's in, in real, real time. time. It always kind of annoys me when they say we have ten seconds left, and then like three minutes pass in the film. It's just like oh, you, you know, guys, the, you've run out of time now. You know, the most egregious example of that is in Dragon Ball Z. Oh really? Yeah, I rem- It's during the Namek saga when Goku is facing off against Frieza, and then at one point when Frieza like throws like a big energy blast straight into the core of the planet he goes like eh, I go, like there'll be five minutes until this planet explodes <laughs> 40 episodes later <laughs> I, or something like that and it's still there yeah oh no it um what was i gonna say have you ever heard um how ymca in a minor key sounds like dragon ball music i have heard that <laughs> it's really it it does sound like Dragon Ball. It's like the Kikuchi score. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that there's actually like a constant like back and forth debate between Dragon Ball fans like which score is like the more Dragon Ball because like mm. there there's like several different scores like the two most popular ones is the original Kikuchi score which I prefer mm. and the Bruce Falconer score that was done for the uh, dub that was produced by Funimation. Mm which has a lot of like synths and whatnot and uh, everybody has their own opinion on it but I will not deny that some of the Bruce Falconer school ha- score has like there's some bangers in there there's like there's some really iconic ones but when when you think about Dragon Ball you think of that that really like loud in your face brass sound mm, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like that that is Dragon Ball to me yeah no I think so too I've never really watched Dragon Ball I think I tried watching Dragon Ball Kai a long time ago but I never really got into it yeah Dragon Ball Kai like a, a lot of people say like oh it's not as good like I'm, what are you talking about The ex- it's the exact same thing except they, they cut all the filler yeah so it actually feels like okay, it's still not five minutes but like it's a lot better yeah and I'm probably need to give it another try because that was when I was fresh off the heels from having watched Hunter Hunter 2011 for the first time and it's difficult to kind of jump from that to any other show because it's just it's just one of a kind you know yeah I, I still think that it was so funny like when when the the remake of uh, Hunter Hunter was airing mm-hmm. and, uh, and I didn't watch it myself, uh, myself but I saw like a lot of people on social media watching it and when the, when episode one had aired everybody was just so mood whiplashed by the ending theme song Oh, because yeah. nobody expected them to get fear and loathing of Las Vegas. That's true. I remember listening to that when I first, because when I first watched the first episode, it was my it was my mate um, that I was studying with at the time. He said, "You got to watch Hunter Hunter," and I was like, "Sure." And I watched it, and I was kind of like a little nonplussed by the first episode. I was like, "Hmm, yeah, it's all right." And then I heard the outro with the "Yeah," and I was like, "Yeah, uh-huh. like it, 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 like that." That's what I love about fear and loathing of Las Vegas. Uh, I think there's uh, the exact term for it in Japanese is. Picorino, which is like, I, I think just like a portmanteau of onomatopoeias for, for like Nintendo, like 8 bit sounding sounds and Screamo. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like a specific, like a subgenre. I remember hearing like uh, another Picorino uh, shof, uh, medley by uh, three different producers. It was Murio Kupi, Yuyo Yupe, and an Utaite nam- named Neko. Mm-hmm. And all they did was do Picorino covers of Kirby themes. And it goes. So, That's so hard. Good. It goes so hard. That's so good, if if you haven't heard it, look up Pink Ball Rush Hour. It goes so hard. Have you um think speaking of like sort of nostalgic music, 
I um, have you seen that? First of all, just as a little a little opener, have you seen the um, that TikTok where it's like a stitch of this one guy with the uh, the, the, the 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 file select music from Mario sixty four, and he's going like. Mm. <laughs> He's like shrugging his shoulders and smiling, and then somebody stitched it with like, "My family's dead. What did you? What did you do? What did you do?" And he's like, "It's like, what did you do to my family? Why did, why did you, well, you burn my house to the ground?" He's like, "He got a little bit silly. He got a little silly, and he's just shrugging like." <laughs> but you've been playing through Mario sixty four recently. Oh, I actually beat it. You beat it, nice. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Got seventy star and like threw Bowser into the into the booms. I I I, I beat it. I beat it again last year, and I just. I was so disappointed the first time I threw Bowser in the, really? the All Stars Correction, because oh yeah, <laughs> bye bye, bye bye. Instead of so long, yeah, Bowser. Yeah, I missed that so much. Um, but I'm, I was just I was just thinking about it because I was listening to some music from the game, and I don't know if you can really get a more surreal nostalgic experience than you have with Mario sixty four. It's like it's so unique and it's so itself. <sighs> you know? uh, Rainbow ride. <laughs> Rainbow, right? Rainbow. I mean, listen, it's a much more difficult game than we remember. Yeah, yeah. Like, I rem- I don't remember. Like, when I was younger, I never mauled it at the game. Mm. I don't ever remember myself mauling at it. I, I straight up mauled it. Mm. I was so angry at Rainbow Ride. That was... And, and um, Rainbow Ride is just mental torture because it's not only that the stage is like, just one wrong step in your fall and you're resetting. It's also that... The stage is so slow because you're just sitting on like uh, flying carpets and waiting, and the music is the most oh my god, stress inducing thing in the entire game, like soundtrack wise. Mm, so true. I am, um, that was me when I, I had to do the final Bowser fight because I just couldn't. Uh, maybe it's something about the All Stars version having like a little bit of Nintendo Online kind of lag to it, but throwing Bowser in the final fight was so difficult oh, I kept missing I, I was getting it took me like 30 like 35 minutes to just keep reloading and trying again it was a nightmare but it's all made worth it for those levels where did you ever you must you played Mario 64 DS oh yeah well. 100% that absolutely. was my introduction to the game too did you have dreams about that game I did not actually oh, that's weird because I, I think, like, the basis for the whole every copy of Mario 64 is personalized oh my God. thing. The, the fact that you brought that up, I just remembered something recently. Oh, yeah? Oh, oh my God. I have this... You, you know, random... This, you just remembering I'm getting goosebumps because <laughs> it was so wild. Uh-huh. Um, um, do you know certain things in your life that you just, like, remember clear as day for no reason? Like, oh, yeah. core memories. Mm-hmm. One core memory is when I was very recently traumatized by a screamer. Oh, yeah. And as a result, I was very paranoid of YouTube videos. It makes sense. So a lot of the time, I would like put on YouTube videos on speakers that I thought like maybe this is a screamer and walk away just to let it play through mm. and see if I heard anything. There was one video I watched of Mario sixty four and something about unlocking Luigi or something. Right. And it was had this really convoluted setup about like clipping through a wall and whatnot here and there, and something about like the music that was playing I just knew that this is like this might be a screamer so I stood Mm -hmm. up and walked away and sure enough I heard the screamer I was like I knew it I called it (laughs) so I just moved away from that now like and I'm not talking like like joking like maybe how like like 13 plus years later I watch a video on YouTube about screamers about like how they came to be and everything Mm -hmm. and a few of the famous examples and then like at the very end he decides like like the screamer that got to me the most is not available anymore all that exists is a screenshot of the thumbnail so they was trying to uh, they were trying to catalog it and like even on like there's a screamer wiki Mm -hmm. it's the exact video I saw all those years ago I recognized the thumbnail and everything and I'm just like, oh my god! Lost and it, media. Yeah, that that's that screamer video is lost me- media at this point, and I'm I kind of want to rewatch it just to see what. Yeah, because it's so mysterious. Like, I remember I had that. Um, 
there was like there was like this random sort of cheap free MMO that I was I downloaded on my Windows XP laptop. It was the first time I ever got screamed, and it was like how to how to get infinite money. And obviously, I fell for that. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get infinite money. And so I watched that, and it was like, okay, first you get this, you get this, and then screamer. And like I leaned back, covered my eyes, and like desperately tried to like exit out of the video, like threw my headphones off and everything like that. And then I was so paranoid. I would always like scrub through the video beforehand to like see if I could find a scary image. And then I would just, you know, get oh, rid of it. yeah. In the past, they didn't have that. Mm. Like you know, they you didn't, did yeah, they? Yeah. When yeah. you hover over the timeline, you see like a little preview. Sometimes you just get that. Like honestly, Mario sixty four is personalized. Is such a great idea because I've never had dreams about a game more. Than Mario 64. Like, I vividly remember every dream I've ever had about this game. It would always be me stumbling onto some secret level or something like that. I remember in um, the, the the first floor where you've got like Wet Dry World, you've got um, all of those different levels up there. I remember finding a doorway that had like a few pixels in the door frame and like clipping through those and finding a whole new set of levels. And I remember, and like there was one where you're in a giant kitchen and you have to like wall jump to get on top of the chairs. There was one which was like this giant parapet and the wall of a castle. You a really remember end. a lot of this. I remember so much about this, and I feel like every copy of Mario sixty four is personalized would be a lot creepier if it was just weird like it was just weirdly specific like oh my copy of it did this but all of the content is just yeah i wario apparition wario app- i mean the wario apparition worked for like one of them but then there's always like yeah i found this image of luigi hanging by a rope with blood coming out of his eyes and it's like no you didn't no you didn't. it's just kind of it's just kind of fucking typical like very very creepy pastory i feel like just making it very weird is a lot scarier you know having like yeah, slight like alterations to the music plausible the best one i ever saw was i think it was by this guy called greenio on youtube and like did you ever try going into the giant stained glass window of peach outside the castle no i so i was convinced you could unlock waluigi I was convinced that he was hidden in the DS game, and I kept trying to find like any sort of anything resembling a painting that I might be able to get inside. So there's the giant stained glass window above the bridge where you enter the castle. I kept trying to jump inside that. I saw a video where you do that, where they sort of they, they do a certain wall jump and they get behind it, and there's a door back there and all that kind of stuff. Oh, and they then, gaslit you exactly. And so I started watching it, and I was like, "This is exactly what I would have wanted from this, right?" And then it be- quickly becomes like too creepy it's like a sign that says turn back or whatever it is and it's like oh come on you know yeah i remember there was one of those things um like i remember the old the old good old-fashioned day of like playground rumors about video games oh oh, like one of the one of the big ones like like is obviously the famous mew is hiding underneath a truck in pokemon red i didn't know about that i never used to play pokemon oh yeah but that. that that was one of the and the big ones and you want to know something really funny mm-hmm. about that like that uh, that truck you never see it in the original the only way to get it is like to do sort of sequence break and mm-hmm. it gets surf early so when you're supposed to like step aboard a boat called the SS Anne if you just like surf off the the little like bridge that you walk on uh, you'll find a truck that's just there like mm-hmm. that you never see and it's just like part of the tile set mm-hmm. and people just said oh Mew is underneath that truck if you use like strength on it but uh, obviously that wasn't true but in the remake Fire Red and Leaf Green <gasps> when you go there like if you actually do the same sequence break and go to that truck nothing happens but if you check the truck this time instead of nothing happening you find one potion that's just this sort of like we know <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute that's so cute I love that kind of thing where they kind of acknowledge it I remember one big thing that really annoyed me uh, was that I used to um, a long ass time ago now like maybe 10 12 years ago yeah it would have been longer than that like maybe like 14 years ago I used to do swimming lessons at um at my local pool and whenever I would go there I would need to like I'd get changed and I would wait for a little while uh, for the instructor to come over and sat next to me one day is this kid and this kid has um I think he's got his DS, but he's playing a different game. And so, we, and so, I start talking to the, I start talking to this kid. Like, I think he sort of was like, "Hi, sir." And sort of tried, tried to get my attention. And I was like, "Oh, what are you playing there?" You know, and all that kind of stuff. And he and he then said, "Do you like Mario Kart?" And I was like, "I love Mario Kart. Yeah, on the DS. Yeah, it's one of my favorites." And he says, "I know how to fly in Mario Kart." And I was like, 
what? And I was like, you can't fly in Mario Kart. I feel like I feel like I should have entertained him, and I should have like, I should I should have sort of like. Can you show me? Okay, I was like, can you show me? And he's like, I don't have it, but I'll bring it next week. And I was like, all right. And you I was so I'm, confident about my, it. In my head, I was like, this kid's lying. I was like, there's no way. But I, for some reason, the 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 idea of entertaining a child disappeared from me in that moment i was like this kid is lying and i'm gonna prove him wrong to his face <laughs> and so next week he br- he brings his ds in and i go find this kid and i'm like all right you got mario kart and he was like yeah yeah yeah. and you know what he does he pulls up mario kart he's on cheap cheap beach and he just presses the triggers and the car does the little hop before it starts to drift and i just was like oh god he got me he got me. He convinced me that he had some secret tech to be able to take off and fly like a plane in Mario Kart, and he just showed me the little thing. I was like, that's not... I was like, that's not flying. That's falling with style. <laughs> was re- and looking back on it, it's really cute that, like, I being this this ancient creature and him being, like, this fucking eight-year-old kid just absolutely bamboozled me one day. It was really funny. I remember, actually, once when I was on a pretty long flight, and I had my DS with me, and there was another kid, like, a few seats over that also had the, uh, their DS, mm-hmm. and I had Mario, Mario Kart DS, mm-hmm. and, like, we, we like, got, got to talking, and uh, we just, uh, like, asked him, do you, like, do you play Mario Kart? Yeah, I'm like, but I don't have it. I'm just like, that's okay, we can you didn't do download play. So we were we just, just going to play Mario Kart. Like, yeah. this kid was, like, w- like way younger than me. Yeah. And uh, I proceeded to absolutely dominate <laughs> because... <laughs> Like it, I, I'm like, the, the, I didn't even mean to be like a jerk or anything, but I guess it was just in my DNA to like f them kids even back then. Mm-hmm. Oh god, you know I um, what is it? Have you seen that video of um the guy who's playing Mortal Kombat 11 and he or it might be Mortal Kombat 10 and he matches into some kid online and he's playing and he's playing as Jax with like the rocket launcher move right. and he just keeps spamming the rocket launcher and the kid it just travels across the screen does a ton of damage and the kid has no idea how to counterplay and he just keeps getting hit falling over hit falling over and the kid is like stop stop that's not fair let me go and the, the guy's like welcome to the real world welcome to the real world kid no one's gonna no, no, no one's gonna t- show show you any pity welcome to the world and he's like no no let me go no stop it he's like he's, he's like you need to learn how to grow up you need to grow up this is what the real world is like and he's like no no and then <laughs> and it rematches the kid afterwards and he just keeps going it's a really that's funny. what i miss like uh just you don't really get it anymore because games don't really have voice chat anymore like because no. they, because it like they know how toxic and yeah. it can be but i low-key miss like like the trash talk that would come out oh, of it. Yeah. Like I remember specifically, like, a, um, like I don't, I can can't find it anymore because it was on like a a Machinima top ten video, mm-hmm. and Machinima like nuked everything. But there was this one kid that just launched into like a rap god level <laughs> tirade about like like there was like somebody like yelling at this kid and saying like I'm really like you're you're basically run of the mill like. Like oh like uh, you're you're a piece of uh, blah I'm gonna do X Y and Z to your family yeah and yeah. then he launches into like a rap god like thing like <laughs> I don't even want to say it because like it does get kind of vulgar but it's like very creative the fact that he mm. doesn't stutter that's I I can never like, do I, that. like freestyling he, is impossible yeah for me. yeah because like once he's done like the dude says it doesn't even say anything he just like kind of laughs and just says the 4th of July because like he mentioned something about the 4th of July because he couldn't believe what it was <laughs> what he just heard have you ever seen that one where the, where the guy is like man we lost the game and he punches his desk and the kid on the mic is like I'm gonna put my cat on the mic and he's like don't put don't put your cat don't put the cat on the mic and there is no cat this kid leans as close into his mic as possible and as loud as he can he goes meow 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 as loud as he can and he's like dude shut up shut up that's not your cat and this kid does not stop it meow like I, I need I need you to understand how much it's clipping and busting out the mic with how loud he's saying that meow it's so so hilarious that is so good or <laughs> Yeah, have you seen that one Twitch streamer that like throws his controller and just go, Effie, I hope your whole family has a nice Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that? I have not seen that, no. <laughs> and the thing is, he sounds like he's on the verge of tears. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it's so every time you have a mic with me. It's so good. Okay. And or have you seen the guitar hands voice message? No. What? You've not seen the guitar hands? What hand? is that? It's uh, somebody I think somebody that uh, like probably talked smack with him on GTA online mm-hmm. and it, he just like goes yeah well you're just jealous that I'm gonna be able to do something with my uh, life and my guitar hands that you can't so yeah kid you're gay and then he plays Enter Sandman <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I think there was there was one kind of like that where someone sends a guy a, um, like a bad message and he responds he responds with a voice where he says man why your ass look like a oh yeah and, and it, it's like the the, the redneck theme from Earthbound <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right. I think that's it. Oh, God. I, 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 I had another one in my mind. I think that was it. So, we're about an hour in now. Mm-hmm. I have a question. What up? How would you feel about trying some real caviar? I'm a little bit nervous. That's but, okay. But at the same time, like, it's it's caviar. I like I, You like caviar. Well, I, I do like caviar. I, I went out yesterday before I, um, I was, I was originally gonna, I was gonna stream yesterday, but, um, I needed to go out and get this, so I wound up not having enough time, but what I wound up doing was, I went out, and I went and I purchased some more caviar, and some, um, and some bellinis to have it on, so we don't, I don't have What's any, a bellini? a bellini is a little, little pastry, it's oh, a little, okay. little, little pastry, um, normally we would have it with creme fraiche and with egg whites, but I think, <laughs> sorry, like South Park has a ruined ca- uh, creme fraiche for me, <laughs> it's true, <laughs> cream fraiche. but I think, I think the less ingredients, the better, the, 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 the trimmings with caviar, like creme fraiche, like onion and all that kind of stuff, it tends to just be to counteract the saltiness, but you like saltiness, don't you? I, I do like Especially salty. with Sven S. Like, that's very yeah, yeah, salty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sven is very salty. All right. You you have your fun. I'm going to go get this stuff, and I'll be right back. All righty. Hi, guys. You're stuck with me now. While Vox is going to get get that caviar. God, this is so, like, strange, because I have had this mic, like, this exact mic, like, near me before, but it's weird hearing it actually, like... Oh, hi, I'm Box now. <laughs> like, uh, wee. This is the first time I've ever done this. Wee. Let me, wee, 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 wee. Move him over there. There. Now he looks happy. He's happy now. <laughs> it's weird having it actually work. Like, This is fun. This is actually really fun. <laughs> I can't work under these conditions. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but like Fox is rummaging around in the kitchen in the distance.
years inside the Carolina Hurricane Hall of Fame. Yeah. Oh, oh my like, God. Yeah, this is like properly sealed. It is. It is. They've got to be properly sealed. It's a very, very expensive product. I didn't pay quite as much for this one as I did last time because everyone had a heart attack afterwards. His Majesty's Fine Caviar. His Majesty's Fine Caviar. We got a new one for um, for the for King Charles's coronation, actually. Oh, he's right. You actually do need a can opener for this. Holy crap! This is this is like properly sealed. It's like break-in proof. I just saw a haka go bad fast in the chat. <laughs> His camera is still up from the position. Uh, I don't know. He, he, he's just he's just in standby mode. Sorry, I've got like a a wine bottle open. I'm not sure how well this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try. Hopefully, it's not too loud. It shouldn't be. I just remembered the. Have you seen that one clip of somebody stabbing like a knife into their phone? No. Yeah, there's they stab it like right into their phone, and like you can hear like the screen cracking, like the touch screen like breaking. But then something happens mm -hmm. where like it accidentally taps something on the screen. So while he's stabbing, you just hear boom, ba dee ba dee ba dee ba dee boom, ba dum boom 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 boom, and he just starts laughing. Why is he stabbing his phone? It makes me think about that one time a girl was on IG Live just playing around with a gun and she, you can see, you can hear a loud bang and the stream stops. You can see that she shot her phone by accident. <laughs> what? It's really stupid. Yeah, I swear I have like a better can opener for this in here, but I can't find it. <laughs> oh no. I'm gonna open what did this you use a can opener for earlier? Um, for opening the last caviar I had when I did it on you stream. You don't know where you put it after that? I don't know. <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, this is a delicate spoon. I shouldn't try that. Yeah, no, that's gonna break. What? Did you finish your nuggies? I don't think I did. No. Oh, I thought so. Mm, maybe we can. Maybe we can reheat them later if you feel if you want to. I don't. I don't eat nuggets. You don't eat nuggets. No, I, I wish I did, but no. Somebody asked me to use my heel to open it. I think my heels are a little bit like. How sharp do you think they are? Uh, yeah, he's not wearing slippers, so that's what he's gonna. Yeah. I don't care how elegant you think he is. He ain't walking in those. Yeah. Neither can I. I can walk in stilettos, but only for a short while. I don't have much practice with them. Seriously, not get this open. I want to see. If, can can I get this? Open? No, no, it's not gonna work. Aiko-kun, hatsu no black caviar, so da yo. Naka, futsu no black caviar, zenzen tabeta koto nai no de, chotto kincho shiteiru, demo. Hmm? I don't recall ever having owned one of these. I have found a socket wrench. A socket wrench. I'm gonna try and open it with this. Oh my this. god. I, I'm gonna laugh so hard I if this actually it works. It work. Oh my god, what if it does? works is we get a, a little a little bellini which is a nice little pastry put a few of them on the on the plate right there oh 
they're soft. Very soft. And they kind of look like pancakes. They're a little like pancakes. Yeah, they're more like crumpets. And all you got to do. and crumpets. All you got to do. So here's what I'll do. Um, normally, what you would do is you would get like um, a bellini with a couple other ingredients. We'll just stick with the plain stuff. Yeah. And you use the mother of pearl spoon because for those of you who don't know, uh, a metal spoon will actually ruin the taste of caviar because it's such a sensitive thing that metal reacts with it and ruins the taste, which is fascinating to me. So I have this special little spoon made out of pearl. It's called a mother of pearl spoon. And so you would normally just get a big scoop of it, put it on the blini, and just, do you feel comfortable having that much at once or do you want um, to have like a little nipple first? Let's have a little nipple That's first. Okay. I will... Also, the fact that it's called Mother of Pearls, that makes me remind, remember... Oh, Mother uh, of Pearl. It reminds me of a song called Mother of Pearl Bones by my producer called Babutan. All I want you to do is just scoop only as much as you want. Perfect. And just put that on there like so, right? All right, here we go, guys. This is Ike, who loves caviar toast. This is his first experience with real caviar. Here we go. It doesn't really smell like anything. It doesn't smell like fish, no. That was what shocked me. Okay. Let's see. Bottoms up. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fire. Let's fucking go, baby! That's so it's good. really good, isn't it? I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a whole, I'm gonna have a whole bellini with a ton of it on there. Uh, I love this shit. Oh, oh my god! He just put like how, like half the cup onto his <laughs> bellini. That was like half, half the cup. You see what I say when it's like butter, don't you? Yeah, I see. Like it's, it's almost completely melted. You know, I haven't had this specific caviar before. This one tastes a little bit fishier than I'm used to, but I still like it. I think that maybe this was a good a good type of caviar to introduce you to, because it's kind of like a good middle ground between Savannah and the new stuff. I'm just a little bit scared. Like, I wonder if the whole thing is going to work. Ah, whatever. It's going to be fine. Ow. Bone out the teeth. No, it's still good. Let's fucking go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> So good. I don't know if I would have this on toast though. Um, so it's actually interesting. So in um, most places in the world, they would have this on Bellinis, but in Russia, actually, it's tradition to have it on toast. Really? Yeah. That's where a lot of um, so the, well, some of the most popular name brand caviar is Beluga, and that is farmed from sturgeon in Russia. That's actually nuts how good that is. Like even the aftertaste is nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so expensive. It's such a delicacy. Can and I it's have so some of your orange juice? <laughs> yeah, of course. It's it's just so it's so bizarre that those are fish eggs and they taste like that. Isn't that weird? It's nuts. Have you seen that one episode of like where Gordon Ramsay goes to like I have yeah like where he gets like fresh caviar like it's str like you're literally straight off. I have seen that and it's really fascinating. Mm mm mm. Oh, it fell apart. No. I'll get you another one. Also, I think it'd be nice to have a little um, have a little drink with this. Um, I can even go get you some water, or it goes very well with caviar. I have some white wine as well. I'm not much of a wine guy. Not much of a wine person. I'll get I'll get you some water. I'll be right back. Yeah. Usually, what I have with my caviar toast is actually milk. But the thing is, like. I don't think that Vox has lactose-free milk, and I also don't think I think that his mic, mic, his milk might actually be expired. <laughs> milk, yeah, milk. High-fat milk goes great with toast and caviar. Fancy boys, fancy. Why lactose free? Because your boy's lactose intolerant. The thing is, like with the, like I've tried lactose free milk in other countries, and uh, for it, it, like in other 
countries taste differently from regular milk. But when it comes to Swedish lactose-free milk, I don't know what they do. Maybe it's something about the way that we treat our cows, because our, the living conditions for our cows tend to be very, very good. So that might have something to do with it, because lactose-free milk and regular milk are completely indistinguishable from each other. Did you guys hear Vox in the distance? <laughs> almond or soy milk. I haven't really had much of almond or soy milk. Oh, booba oh, boy. I got myself a whiskey. Oh, um, a whiskey. I feel fancy right now. Is that just from the tap? I just tap away, yeah. Whiskey at 2 p.m. Hey, caviar at 2 p.m. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Or um, my personal favorite. I'm like, hey, 5 o'clock was 20 hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you're enjoying this. Oh, I've got two. I've been eating like this, what some people call fake caviar for so long. Finally having the real stuff, it's like, damn. Come on, get off the spoon. Get, get off the spoon. He wants more. Yeah, baby. He wants it all. thing is, I can still like taste like kind of what Svenness tastes like. Mm -hmm. However, I think what I what fucked you up last time was when you um, is that I, I put it on the way that I usually put it on with like a stringy yeah, yeah the stringy pattern. Usually people just put it on a little bit and then spread it up with a knife. Mm, so I had like a big chunk of it. Mm. Interesting. Oh, I do have all of my hot ones, hot sauces left. Ayo? Mm-hmm. kind of want to try that. We should, we should get some bulldog later. We should get some bulldog. Yes, we need to get bulldog. We can have that um tomorrow. Mm. Mm. We can do that. We can get some two I don't have any like fried chicken or anything for the hot sauce. We could try having it on these bellinis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could. I feel like there's going to be some like very rich sort of caviar aficionado who's, who watched me, who like listened to me open the tin of caviar with a socket wrench and is just, just losing it. What are you doing? Don't put, don't put hot sauce on the caviar. <laughs> I, I, I genuinely think that hot sauce with caviar would not work. I don't think so either. I think it would be a nightmare. <laughs> it might be rancid. No, do, do it without voice and just like I hear this is what all rich people do when they have caveats <laughs> Song, a chai tea and some caviar I'm just like man good morning world good, mo good morning USA good morning. I've got a feeling that it's gonna be a wonderful day the sun in the sky has a smile on his face and he's shining a salute to the American race good is that American dad? yeah okay. it's always swell to say good morning USA good morning USA <sighs> <laughs> Got a feeling that it's gonna be a wonderful day. <sighs> there is probably one spoonful of caviar left, or maybe two. Just want to make sure. Oh, I'm good. You're good. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm still kind of full from that croissant, actually. Croissant, 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 croissant. It's funny, because whenever I have roe, like like red, some people call it red caviar, but it really isn't proper caviar. Caviar is always from a 
sturgeon. Whenever I have that, it kind of bursts in your mouth, like like but almost like boba. Mm. Whereas this caviar, boba doesn't burst though. You just kind of chew through that. Mm. I had a boba dessert once, which was like an ice cream with sort of with little boba pearls around it, and they sort of burst with those citrusy flavors. It was really good. The thing about caviar, this caviar, is that it just melts in your mouth. It just, yeah, they, yeah, just yeah. they look like these perfectly rounded spheres, but they just disappear in your mouth. It's really good. Mm, 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 mm. His Majesty's fine caviar. Thank you, Prince Charles. <laughs> Boba burst of bite and blast should choose your fighter. <laughs> you want to get some bite and teeth? Small line of a million fists. Oh, that was so funny because it because it it has that energy of um, like it could be like a shonen shonen attack. Mm-hmm. It totally could. I reckon that I reckon that will exist. Like, do you remember there was that person who made like the SpongeBob anime intro? Like, it was yeah, really yeah, well yeah, animated. Yeah. Imagine like someone just makes a sort of a sketch thing. Like, it's a four minute anime battle. They, they, they did those, do the they did do a sixteen minute episode with Japanese VO and everything. Oh my god! Biden Burasto. Uh, the thing is, like, do you think Biden will have like? The humor to ever, like if he ever sits down in an interview with anybody that does does know the Biden blast. Well, here's the thing. Right? Because like Obama did the thanks Obama. He did thanks Obama. Yeah, that was really good. See, I, ju- I believe in Joe Biden for that because you know about Dark Brandon. Who? Dark Brandon. I told Kotka about this. So Dark Brandon is a meme that's like, oh, it's Joe's all evil alter ego. And it's Why whenever, Brandon? Whenever he puts on, I guess uh, Biden Brandon. I don't know. He puts on, like, these dark shades, and they're like, oh, it's Dark Brandon. No, we can't mess with him. It's Dark Brandon. He's going to bring the thunder and all of that. And then at, like, a White House dinner or something, Joe Biden said, now, listen, I'm going to be fine with your jokes. And he puts on some sunglasses. I'm not sure about Dark Brandon. And everyone's like, whoa, let's go. So there is a very real possibility that in this timeline, you imagine, we will hear him say Biden blast. Could you imagine, like, you know how Obama dropped the mic and went Obama out? What if Joe <laughs> Biden just post, tracks his post and goes Biden blast at the Biden audience? Biden blast. I, I, th- I think that, like, Obama out, it, like, it, it fits so well because even if you don't know about any of, like, the memes or whatever, it's still funny. Biden blast, so many people at that dinner are going to be really confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the, the thing is, I feel like that's widespread enough and in their in their sphere of like their quote unquote community for lack of a better term that they they would know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just love the love the thought of just like the people in the White House knowing what Biden <laughs> is <laughs> There's that video of Obama when he's just got his phone out with like the boomerang with it like that, and it's like, yeah, hi everybody, I just want to let you know that I love memes. I love them. <laughs> memes. <And> good nights. <laughs> I love memes. memes. I love them. Memes. Good night. Good night. Uh, let me be clear. <laughs> that would be the best way for him to, if instead of saying Obama out, he should have just like let me dis- disappeared like Bilbo Baggins at the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring. Like he says, oh, let, me, let me be clear, <laughs> and then he just is never seen again. It's me, Barack Obama. We should develop the PS5. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite genre. That was my favorite meme for the longest time. It was the one where it's like, where it's like a uh, Nintendo character announces that they have a game for a non-Nintendo console, and then they scream because they realize that they are not on the correct console. <laughs> okay. It's so it started with It's a me, Mario on the PS4. Woohoo! And he just it's like the most discordant like scream. The worst one is that he's like, It's a me, Luigi for the Xbox One. Woohoo! And like he screams like he's throwing himself out of the screen to come and kill you. Jesus. I need to I need to find find some of these. Hold on. It's a me, oh, Luigi for the Sega Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I, I remember the Mario meme from last night. <laughs> <laughs> what was the thing you were talking about last? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that that one. That one. <laughs> I love how he breaks character too. Like he can't even finish it without starting la- <laughs> without starting to laugh. So, 
first of all, look at this cover. Oh my god. It's just a really goofy Mario. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, why? <laughs> wait, 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 the next one's even better is Donkey Kong. Oh, good. ourselves why did loud become funny loud is funny i mean you laugh the most at like a like toad just going <laughs> <laughs> i know but like there has to be a reason there has to, like because like i know it started with like the whole r.i.p headphone users on vine where people would just instead of having because you couldn't add sound mm -hmm. or like music to vine people would just playing music from another phone right next to it and sometimes it would be way too loud <laughs> which is where all the like the bass boost memes came from because people just thought it was funny <laughs> why was it funny see i'll tell you like one one sort of loud equals funny moment that like genuinely killed me so okay a few years ago while i was in um, i think it was like my it was like my second year at university and it was like there were there were these Zoom calls going on for all the lectures and stuff. There was an introductory... Why are you laughing already? <laughs> <laughs> because I can imagine where it's going. <laughs> so we would think... So it's, it was kind of like an introductory sort of, welcome to your second year, guys. And I was like, sort of kind of looking forward to it. And then at the end, they had this, like, um, one of the speakers said, all right, everyone, to say thank you, what we're going to do is everyone's going to turn their mics on and we're all going to clap at the same time. And it sounded exactly like you would imagine. It sounded like they just said, three, two, one, <laughs> like the gates of hell opened. And then you looked at, all, looked at the screen and you could see the people who weren't clapping. And it was just these people with these deadpan, just silent faces who looked slightly scared. They were just, and everyone had been like, and then the clapping started and they went. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that what's so funny about that is not only was it like all the bad mics and the, <laughs> the poor bit rate, yeah. it was also like because usually like they have automatic noise filtering so that noise filtering probably distorted the claps even more yeah you know it definitely did and i think that they probably have a system where the audio bit rate goes down the more people that are speaking at once and so it was like imagine one kilobyte per person <laughs> <laughs> mom said it's my turn on the kilobyte I mean, uh, um, what, what is it like? Uh... I'm drawing a blank, never mind. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I had to do opera singing over Zoom. It was a time. Your poor microphone. I can hear the clipping. I can, hear, I can, I, I I can, can just hear, hear like the, the crackling clipping. and the clipping. Because from opera that. is loud. Yeah. I, I heard a um, an opera cover of um, Apple Bottom Jeans recently. Oh, I've seen that too. <laughs> Apple Bottom Jeans. I, I remember seeing. Oh, it's the heart. I, I remember seeing a classically trained singer also sing "My Neck, My Back." <laughs> <laughs> like he nails it, but after he's done singing it, he just looks like. What has it become? Yeah, he he looks so done with life. They've done a. They've done a, a kids' bop cover of that one Ice Spice song. You're joking. <laughs> that boy's a liar. That boy's a liar. He doesn't see her. But how it's how like is a... kids' bop still? Alive? I don't know. Who who keeps I buying? Don't know. Keeps buying kids' bop. Like huh? genuinely, who keeps buying kids' bop? It's the fact that they they just keep like. Did, did yeah. you know? Like, do you remember when they had Junior Eurovision Song Contest? You don't remember Junior Not Eurovision? Not at all, no. Junior Eurovision used to be a thing. Oh I don't know if it God. is anymore. I don't think it is. I mean, good. I watched... Um, this is the first year that I watched Eurovision. I actually really enjoyed it. 
like I got so invested in rooting for the different countries. I was like, I was all in for Australia and Finland. It's still, it's it's still a thing. Yeah. It's just that nobody talks about it anymore. Yeah. It's very much still a thing. That is so scary. Why are they still doing that? Let those kids live. They should be down the park. You know, having, having. What what is it? Kids do these days. You, uh, oh God. Uh, do you remember? Uh, do, did you have this show in the UK? I I don't know. Like. I I can't literally translate the title in my head, but they ha- would bring on these average people, just like nobody, and and then they would sing. Like the, their goal would be to just like do an impression of an artist as well as they could, like mm-hmm. sound like them, act like them, mm-hmm. look like them, and the closer they were, like people would vote and like they would like win or something. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, like is it, people people know what I'm talking about. Like aim for the stars is what it's called oh. in uh, oh. in uh, in Sweden, but I don't I don't know if they have have anything similar in the UK. <laughs> Be- I don't think we do. There's like there's like the Masked Singer, um, but I don't really know. I, I've never really watched that. I don't really know what that is. It's like it's like they do a song and they take the mask off and like oh my god it's Beyonce. Hmm. Oh my god it's. Sam Smith. Oh my God! Oh, is it M&M. called Your Voice Sounds Familiar? No, I didn't think so. Oh well. Anyway, we used to have that thing, <clears throat> and we also had a, like a, a junior version of that too. Instead of Aim for the Stars, it was called The Little Stars. Aww. And uh, instead of singing, they would lip sync. But Aww. instead, they would dress up like and l- look like a Aww. child version of the stars. And uh, I'm not joking. A kid in my class went on there that's so cool like th- that actually happened <clears throat> because I mean, so, yeah, there's on. this uh, Finnish Swedish rapper called Markulio mm-hmm. um, who uh, he, uh, who this kid loved he would always like we, we sometimes had like performances at school and he would always like do some, like uh, songs like inspired by uh, or like a song by this dude and like do like dances to it and everything and uh, he actually made it on there and did one of like the Marculio songs mm. on there, and I remember when I when they say like, and here's the next contest name, and I was like, wait a minute, and I see my classmate walk out on stage, and I was like, what? Was, what? That's so funny. What? That's really funny. I remember I had kind of a similar experience like that where the stars in their eyes is what it's called in the UK. Ah, where like the. the one of my classmates had a little brother who was like sort of 12 or something but he had an incredible voice like he was in, in, in naturally like almost like a savant at singing mm. and he was going to go on the voice which is like a very big singing contest in the mm. uk and i remember he performed like at my at the college i was studying at, at the time just like you know in the lobby or whatever it was and i listened to him and i was like why can't i do that like I just sat there in my hundreds of years with all of the time to gain that much experience, having no no ability to sing like that, and I was like, "Why, why is this kid so lucky? Huh? Well, why why does he get to do this and not me?" It's like I, I'm I'm not I'm not happy that something good happened to you. It should have happened to me instead. <laughs> it should have been me. <laughs> it should have been me. It's not fair. Uh, have you ever like considered like starting to take like lessons? I have considered it. Yeah, I really I feel like. My passion for singing is very much in I want to learn how to do the weird shit. Like, I want to be able to scream and I want to be able to throat sing as well. I can do throat singing for a little bit, but then it starts to hurt. Like, learning how to do that. Um, you know, actually, the origin of Mongolian throat singing is that it became a way for ancient uh, Mongolians. It was sort of developed by them as a way of... So, I believe they have this culture about feeling connected to nature and throat singing is their way of interpreting and mimicking the sounds of nature so it very much culturally is them speaking to the earth you know so when you hear a throat singer what they're trying to do is essentially this is the sound of a waterfall this is the sound of the wind this is the sound of you know of the grass blowing in the wind and all that kind of stuff and i just really want to learn how to do that i saw this video of a guy saying like oh yeah it's essentially about singing a two like making a sort of a a, a hum at two different tones at the same time and when he did it he sounded like an instrument it was insane yeah the talent I, I, that's um, harmonics exactly he sounded like 
God, what was it? He sounded like a, some sort of ancient reed instrument, but he just had that in his throat, and he just... Yeah, like, a, there, there's this compilation called, like, Alien Voices on mm-hmm. YouTube with people, like, can do really weird things with their voice, and there's, like, some guy just going... And then you hear, hear, like, a whistling tone over that that he is kind of that's, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. It's like... It's, it's like that, but underneath you also, at the same time, have him going... I actually, uh, you know, like when you've seen Zeebel 2, like um, uh, sing a chord, mm-hmm. I used to be able to do that. Oh, really? Yeah, I have a recording of myself singing, <gasps> singing a chord somewhere. It's a little bit out of key, a little bit out of tune, but like it, I used to be able to sing a chord. That's so cool. That's so cool. I, I just I just really want to learn how to do all that stuff. How long did it take you to learn how to do the metal scream? Uh, the thing is, I when I decided that I, I remember exactly when I decided to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was uh, because I, I used to not like screaming. I used to, I used to love metal, but I hated screaming. Mm-hmm. Um, but I when I was like going through my Vocaloid phase and I was discovering like metal producers in the Vocaloid scene, I specifically remember I found Utsu P, and I found one of his songs called "The Dying Message." Mm-hmm. And obviously, Vocaloid scream sounds a little bit weird, but like it's as long as you get the idea of it, you can get into it. But then I discovered the Utaite scene, mm-hmm. and it was this one Utaite from Korea called Vin, mm-hmm. who had a beautiful false chord scream that did a cover of that. And when I heard it, for whatever reason, when I heard that in a song that I was really into, when I was really into like the Vocaloid scene, I just went, wait, that sounds gnarly. I want to learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. So I started like, um, well, looking up different kinds of like, uh, uh, with that did screaming and seeing like, well, what did I want to aim for? So like there were, there was several, there was uh, Vin, there was somebody called Sekihan, there was somebody called Shuhei, there was a Phi and a bunch of others. And I just decided one day when I got home from school that I, uh, what I was just going to, okay, I'm going to sit down and try to learn. And what I did first, I just tried being loud, shouting, and distorting my voice without knowing what I was doing mm-hmm. and see if I could get it somewhere close. And as a result, I blew out my voice for three days. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised. You do not do that. <laughs> and so after that... I started watching tutorials and everything and tried different things for like a week. Did it and nothing happened. But then when I wasn't even trying one time when I got home uh, during lunch because I didn't want to have the lunch at the school cafeteria because it was crap. Mm-hmm. I just got home and I started prepping some toast. And while I was prepping that toast, I was yelling around and quoting an anime called Holic. Mm-hmm. Uh, or XXXHolic if you want to say it incorrectly. <laughs> uh, Hunter X Hunter. Yeah. So uh, it's from episode one where a character called Kimihiro Watanuki is running away from a spirit because he can see spirits. And he just said, like, he's panicking and saying, like, crap, 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 but in Japanese, which is ksol, and mm-hmm. just saying that. So I tried mimicking that, but in Swedish, which, you know, fan is like, damn mm-hmm. it. And I was just doing that and shouting it, just, like, yelling around randomly and raising myself in pitch. And when I was raising myself in pitch, I tied in my throat in a way where I accidentally made, like, an ah! noise where I was like, what was that? How did I do that? How did I do that? Was that? Uh, and I was like, that that doesn't feel like the other ones. And then I just tried projecting into that, and my voice just transformed into a scream, completely at random, at, a week after I decided to, that I wanted to learn it. That's so cool. That's I, so cool. And it's so it's so strange because I've heard people like, oh, it took me like four months to get it right. I'm just like, I got it right after a week on a on a whim. So I have toast and holic to thank for that. Let's go. That's that's such an interesting story, and I, because that was me when I learned how to tie a knot for the first time. I was trying to, f- I've been trying to figure it out for ages, and I never, because obviously the internet didn't exist back then. No one, no one taught me how to tie a knot. So I was just messing around with 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 with, with a piece of string, and suddenly I just got it, and I was like, oh, I can tie a knot now. You know, it's not really that useful in my day to day life, but you know, it's 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 it was it's nice to know now. Um, I remember, I don't know if I actually did manage to do it, but when we were doing karaoke in, um, in Japan and, um, we started singing, um, uh, what would bring me to life? Yeah. I feel like I've managed to somehow accidentally do a false chord stream- scream and I can't do it anymore. Like I was so drunk. I just accessed the ability to do it out of nowhere. And then, and we that, saw and it up and, just, then, and then I forgot. And I just forgot how to do it. I'm, 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 I'm sad. I, it, it makes me feel like I could learn how to do it pretty easily, but I don't want could. to, I definitely could. The thing is like, if, because I've heard, um, like the way that you 
get your screams to sound and like obviously depend on your voice type and your physicality and like the size of your vocal cords since you have a, a much deeper voice than I do like if you actually like properly learn I can only imagine the kind of like inhuman sounds that you would be able to do <laughs> because Will Ramos who's like one of my favorite like screamers mm-hmm. right now uh, he has a little bit of a higher voice mm-hmm. but he can like sound like something not of this world mm-hmm. so if you actually learn I can only imagine what kind of absolute nonsense you can, can get out you could probably sound like Alex Terrible oh my god that's so exciting if, you, if you've never heard Alex Terrible I can show you later like, he does not sound like humans should not make that noise that's so exciting I just I really like the idea of like fully accessing the lowest possible range with a scream like you know but yeah, like that, I don't know how to do that probably there, there, there's the one song that they have called Demolisher where he does like a whole speech in Russian <laughs> while doing that and it's the one in the book like if you heard that in an alleyway you would pass away <laughs> it always oh god if there's any set of is if there's any vocal performance that like I don't understand it's the sort of the chorus from uh, the Doom soundtracks like Doom and Doom Eternal so you've got you've got the it's not I'm not talking about the opening one where he's like and there's the dust in the bite of his sword named him. You're talking about the, the heavy metal crunch. I'm talking about I'm talking about the last But it's like three octaves below oh, yeah, that. And, and that guy can just do yeah, that. He passed away apparently. Did he really? I, I know there was somebody oh, no. from the heavy metal choir that passed away and he I think I think they called him an octavist or something. Like he he could do something crazy. I need to, I would, uh, after the stream, obviously I can't play it on stream, but I'll find that song for you. And it's just, yeah, like with a lot of reverb added, it's just his normal voice in this incredibly low octave. It just sounds like something you would hear out of the gates of hell. Like, yeah. Like, it, like a prayer or something. It's exactly. Like, it exactly. sounds amazing. I really, I haven't played the Doom Eternal DLC yet. I actually haven't even played I, Doom Eternal. I just played the original. You haven't Doom. played, Doom Eternal is so I think it's one of the best shooters ever made because yeah. it's like you know you know the whole thing with Doom 2016 where at a, at, in a, in a time where all all shooters were just cover shooters where it was like run up behind cover blah, 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 blah. Like, Doom yeah, is just obviously, <laughs> I, obviously I didn't play it until twenty when did it we, we 2022 did, yeah, it would have been tw- early 2022 tw- early 20, 2022 was yeah. when I first played it and when I was playing it I just felt like this feels very old school. Mm-hmm. It but, like, is. but like in a good way. Doom Eternal is that, but like cranked up to eleven. So you have because I love you, that there was just like everything is just so obsessed with immersion these days. When yeah. ev- like if you find something, it's got like a, like a power up or something. It's got to be something that's in the environment. And Doom just says it's a floating green shield. Yeah, it's a floating green shield, and it just makes the game so much more fun to play. So Doom Eternal. It doesn't justify why any of these things are here. It's very goofy, but it makes the game so much more fun. There are monkey bars that you can swing from. There are jump pads that you can fly off of. You get multiple mid-air dashes and a double jump. You have like and they have no reason for that. They have no reason for being there. If you well, I mean the, the air dashes is like your suit has like boosters in it or whatever it is. But there's also like lots of ways that it's the combat in Doom Eternal is like a puzzle where you have to move around a lot and every enemy is dealt with in a completely unique way. Every enemy has unique strategies and if you kill an enemy in a certain way, um, then you'll wind up... um, You okay? Yeah. If you kill an enemy in a certain way, it can be better than other ways. So in the late game, there are these enemies that have like a really big head and if you headshot them with a sniper, they burst into a load of ammo and health. Um, if you use your flamethrower on a whole group of enemies, it doesn't really do that much damage, but they will drop a ton of armor, and then you can use that for that. If you use your chainsaw, that's how you get a load of health and ammo back. Um, it, the One of the enemies is like the one of those giant spiders with a brain uh, that yeah. has a little gun on top. In Doom Eternal, you can shoot that turret off of the top of it and then it will lose its ability to shoot at you and it will suddenly become a lot more faster and aggressive but easier to kill so every enemy is different and you just move around constantly you're always like thinking on your feet trying to figure out good strategies for how to take out the enemies it's really really good it's a fantastic game i played it through myself like the moment it came out and uh, it's really yeah. funny like you can uh, if you go back and check my vod <laughs> you can see the that it's very obvious that I, the mo- game that I played the most at that time was Apex <laughs> because whenever I would fire the shotgun I would aim down sights before firing <laughs> <laughs> I always love like kind of getting the controls wrong or trying to trying to project your knowledge of games you've already played um, and then on a game where it doesn't really work like the biggest example of this would be Dark Souls players 
um, picking up Sekiro because <laughs> Dark Souls is like the gameplay loop for Dark Souls, Dark Souls One, no, Demon Souls, Dark Souls One, Two, Three, and Bloodborne is dodge and hit. That's all of the gameplay and all of the combat. It's just wait for when the enemy is about to hit you, roll, hit him back, wait for it, roll again. Sekiro is like a rhythm game where dodging gives you no iframes. It's just for like sometimes you can, sometimes you might be able to get away Don't with you a get quick dodge. I- iframes out of the wazoo in Dark Souls. You do. You um, you get a whole third of a second of, of invincibility every time you roll. So as long as you're precise with it, you can get through the game without getting hit. Um, but in Sekiro, instead, you need to left bumper to parry everything. And everything that doesn't have a special marker on it can be parried. Even like giant, the Guardian Ape, which is a huge gorilla. Like he can smack you over the head, but you can still parry that. And it's more like a rhythm game. But then there are these special moves, like a thrust move. One of the coolest things in Sekiro is the, called the Mikri counter, where if an enemy has like a little flashing symbol above their head that means it's like the kanji for perilous or dangerous or whatever, and they thrust towards you, if you dodge forwards, you'll stomp on their sword and like push it into the ground and you'll get like a you'll get like a really big sort of um, debuff to their stamina and all that. It's really, really satisfying to get right. So you get someone coming at you with a huge wind up on the spear and then you'll just dash forward, lift your leg and just stamp it into the ground. It's really, really cool. And and if they do a sweep attack, you can jump and then Goomba stomp on their head. And that's really fun, too. <laughs> Goomba stomp, that's funny. Uh, you know what I'm really looking forward to in terms of, like, FromSoft? Mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to all the FromSoft peop- uh, fa- fanboys who have just been, like, playing Bloodborne, Dark Souls, mm-hmm. and saying, you know, to get the rudest awakening when they try out Armored Core 6. Oh, I can't wait for uh, that. Because that's going to be me. Yeah, that's going to be I'm, me. Again, <laughs> I, I hope that Armored Core is as cruel of a mistress as it was to me. Mm-hmm. Because, like, in classic from Substance, like, uh, fashion, like, Armored Core is hard. Like, I'm not joking. What is the gameplay actually like? Is it a shooter? Uh, it's a mech shooter. Oh. And, it's, and the thing about Armored Core, like, the big appeal of it is, like, the customization is it's absolutely insane the level of customers and you can I'm not joking when I say that you can sit down and spend a good an hour and 20 minutes just customizing your mech before hopping into a mission I am not joking hang on when is Armored Core? Armored Core 6 when when is it coming out? Uh, I don't I think it's coming out this year it is coming out this year Uh, and I'm not joking with like with some of the older Armored August August. coming out in just a few months yeah like in the in the old days uh, there was called the armored core grip where mm-hmm. they would t- take the controller turn it this way and play the game like this <gasps> oh yeah no I've heard because about the that. control scheme was just that whack <laughs> the control scheme is like a little bit whack. my personal favorite is armored core 4 answer and that one is like a lot easier to control in my opinion and like it has the most satisfying gameplay I know that Oliver Sensei uh, that, that's also his favorite mm-hmm. I it, one, of, one of my favorite things is when a game is so good that it can be littered with the most awful like problems for accessibility ever. Like It can have controls that don't work. The biggest example would be Dark Souls 1. When it was first ported to PC with the Prepare to Die edition, they very much did not like... Um, they they were not prepared to make a PC port, and it just doesn't work. It runs at a max of 30 FPS, and the frame rate tanks that down to like 20, 15 all the time. And so to really, before they did Dark Souls Remastered, you needed a mod to play Dark Souls 1 on PC, because it just wouldn't work otherwise. But the fact is, Dark Souls 1 is such a fantastic game that people were willing to put in the work to make that PC port work, and oh boy does it ever work. It's such a, It's such an incredible game. Speaking of which, like, do you think like we'll be able to do it? I, I don't think we'll be able to, so uh, we're gonna have to pick something else to play, which that, is which is a big shame. Sucks. It's just one of those things. Uh, we're gonna have to pick something else to play. So I want to kind of fit with the theme of me showing you a game uh, that I really like that you haven't had a chance to play yet. But um, I will have to kind of like think really carefully about which one we want to do because there are a lot of options. I mean, now, right now I'm thinking maybe Doom would be fun. Like I can sit back with Doom, but I'm less familiar with Doom than. Um, than with Dark Souls and uh, FNAF. I've only ever played FNAF 1. You've played FNAF 1. Hmm. Yeah. It, I mean, FNAF it, 2, I've heard, is the hardest one. FNAF... It varies. FNAF 2, I think, is the fairest one. Really? Like, FNAF 2 is very stressful. Wait, wait, which one, one is the most BS? The most BS? There are, I would say, Night 4 in FNAF Sister Location. Because... 
didn't they have to patch that? They did have to patch it, and it's still fucking impossible. It's the one where you have to crank up the spring locks while all the mini ballerinas are coming in. Yeah. That it takes, like, hours minimum every time. It's so difficult. Um, and then FNAF 6 is kind of pretty difficult to... Like, it's very RNG-based, FNAF 6. Like, you can have a completely robust strategy, and still you'll just randomly die sometimes. FNAF 2 is very fair. FNAF 3 is very fair. FNAF 4... FNAF 4 is probably the most fun for my money because like the gameplay loop is pretty I think, simple I think that one would have scared me the most because you have to listen you, you need just, to turn your you volume gotta, you gotta crank your volume mm, you really do and then the jump scares really get you on FNAF 4 it's it's a nightmare to play but it is ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> you see what you did there I, 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 I mean that I mean that but I'm gonna take credit for it yes I'm a genius um, I come up with puns all the time uh, Shakespeare called puns the sharpest form of wit uh, and uh, he thinks that I am a sharp lad. Uh, I'm gonna go have dinner with Shakespeare later on. Uh, yeah. Do you know that Shakespeare invented the word bump? Bump? Yeah, bump. As in like speed bump. That was not a word before Shakespeare just created it. That's wild. Yeah. Man, there are a lot of words that Shakespeare just came up with and because he was fucking Shakespeare, like the words just entered the English language immediately. Huh. Words Shakespeare invented. Bandit. Critic. What? He came, the word critic comes from Shakespeare. What? Dauntless. Dwindle. Dwindle. Um, elbow as a verb. So to elbow your way in. That's Shakespeare. Uh, green-eyed to describe jealousy. Lackluster. Lonely. Lonely. The word lonely what? was invented by Shakespeare. I, I don't believe that. That, he, d that doesn't seem right. 1600s. He was one of the most influential writers of all time. What? The word, I mean, think about it. Like, it would, probably people would have before then would have said lonesome or um, or, or, or I feel but alone. It must have been like at least a derid, 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 <laughs> derivative that he coined. What? He invented the word swagger. Shh. <laughs> 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 From, you from know that the, video yeah. called Shrek has swag? Yeah. <laughs> we need Shakespeare. Shakespeare has swag now. <laughs> Shakespeare has swag. If it weren't for Shakespeare, we wouldn't have Shrek has swag. Oh. <laughs> that's the that's the butterfly effect there. Shakespeare choosing to invent that word. The, 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 the dominoes keep growing in size into the creation of Shrek oh, has God. swag. Unaware. Unaware? Uncomfortable. What? From Romeo and Juliet, 1599, was the birth of the word uncomfortable. What, what was before that? Discomfort? Discomfort. Or, I mean, remember, um, English has evolved so much that if you've ever read the, um, or tried to read the Canterbury Tales from the, uh, the 12th century, it's illegible. The, the English has evolved so much, and the pronunciation has evolved so much, that Middle English, in which the Canterbury Tales were written, is completely illegible. None of the words make sense. Even the, the characters they're drawn in. I completely knew. So yeah, this is almost five hundred years ago. I remember reading like an old like uh, uh, a romance novel, a Swedish romance novel called, that was like at least I think it was Swedish. It was either Swedish or it was translated. But it was like really old, like it's like one hundred and twenty years old. Mm -hmm. and about I think it was uh, uh, Tristan and Isolde or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it like it, it was hard. Like the sw the Swedish in it was very weird. Mm. I always really enjoy sort of old timey, like accurate language. So remember watching the lighthouse? Mm. All of the dialogue from that film was um, inspired by real <laughs> journals written by <laughs> Swagspear. <laughs> um, but yeah, like all of it was um, taken from journals written by real lighthouse keepers from that yeah, era. Yeah, and you I can was, really tell. I saw that. I e lion dog, arc bellow bid our father the sea king rise from the depths full foul at his fury hark triton so yeah three more words undress okay unearthly unreal epic games no you owe some royalties to shakespeare <laughs> epic games owe some royalties to shakespeare public domain be damned <laughs> <laughs> yeah 500 years ago we can we can fiddle the law for that one we can get the shakespeare estate a little more money He just added un. <laughs> he, just, he, he really did. He just, he just added un to it. Added un. Mine. I mean, it makes sense. Like, if you're that good at English and you're thinking, like, there's a word... I think we all do that now. 
like if there's a word that you want to say the opposite of it but you don't know what it actually is just add un to the to the word unpog. and then you yeah unpog boom shakespeare un shakespeare un shakespeare un swag <laughs> Kazook swag <laughs> un swag was my favorite unpog uncool unsheesh unbased unbased yeah there you go I reckon maybe the reason we do that might even be because of Shakespeare yeah but now instead we're we're, we're sort of regressing at that point because nah, we don't say unbased we say based and based and <laughs> <laughs> we're making it more stupid the thing is about it though this is so long ago this is almost 500 years ago it's like the six, yeah so 400 years ago like right around when I was born you don't know in the future, how much language is going to change. Imagine if, because of how much it's used, imagine if 400 years from now, 2,400... That so loud all of a sudden. <laughs> sorry. Imagine if pog is just a part of the dictionary in 400 years, because people use it that much. We're going to trace it back to the point in time like where that started happening. They're just going to be like, in something called Luxium appeared. <laughs> There's a picture of Luca Canestro in the dictionary. <laughs> Just like, hmm. Here's where the, it entered, like, the cultural zeitgeist. <laughs> zeitgeist is such a great word. I think it sounds really funny. It does. It's zeitgeist. 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 It sounds like something Professor Frank would invent. Ugh, I've, come for, I've perfected my zeitgeist. Like, 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 there's just so many words that, like, are just, we just throw in sometimes and don't think too much about, about but when we think about it, it's like, oh, Latin. <laughs> Like, I remember once, like, when I was uh, talking about how you had, uh, you know, Vox was repeating that ad nauseum for the past week or so, <laughs> and then somebody in chat was just like, hmm, Sasugai just slipping in that casual Latin, and I'm like, I did. <laughs> Wait, what was the Latin? Ad oh, nauseum. Um, ad nauseum. Ah, oh, yeah. I mean, that's just, sort of, that's just sort of a word. Like, that's just a part of our understanding at this point, you know. I don't think... I mean, I guess it, it, like, I mean, so much of language is derived from Latin. The word mirror is derived from Latin mirari, meaning to behold. Hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of words that come from other languages. Someone in chat is pointing out schadenfreude is, is German. Hmm. And a, a smorgasbord is Swedish. Smorgasbord, that's a, that's Swedish, is it? Yeah, oh. it literally means sandwich table. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I can hear that. I was talking on stream recently about how amazing the German language is, like how specific and literal it is about everything. And you can just hear in your head like some early man seeing things and prescribing the most literal word for it imaginable, like uh, turtle or tortoise, for example. Um, a Schildkrot, which means shield toad. Uh, it's the same as we did. It's called Panda. Really? Yeah, shield, yes, shield toad. The shield toad. That's so cute. That's really, really cute. And then there's, then there's of course, um, my favorite, which is nipple, um, brastvors, which means uh, breast wart. It's the same as we say to Sweden. No. <laughs> and then there are a bunch of other German words which are just funny, like butterfly being schmetterling, which always <laughs> makes me laugh, or, um, or pen being kugelschreiber. Or Krankenwagen. Kranken, Krankenwagen. <laughs> or Krankenhaus. <laughs> Krankhaus. If, if, if I was going to a German hospital and they said, we're going to take you to the Krankhaus, I would feel like I was going there to get Krankenhaus. Monster, this the thing. Krankenhaus. I was yeah. going to go, I would, I would, I'd be scared they were going to take me there and chop my, chop my limbs off. <laughs> the thing is, like, it also depends on who's saying that because I've heard, like, some. Uh, uh, German speakers that have like silky smooth vo voices and say like I love you like uh, ich liebe dich and it sounds like <laughs> very, very but then when you hear somebody like <laughs> like Till from Rammstein say it it's the it's it sounds like a threat it does <laughs> ich liebe dich ich liebe dich someone said that I'm butchering German and it's making them cringe with a K <laughs> cringe with a cringe cringe <laughs> 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 yeah, brother, I think it's a bit cringe. Cringe, as we say in Swedish. Cringe. Because we don't have it like a j. We, j. we just sort of say sh instead. Oh, cringe. Cringe. Ah, very cringe. Very cringe, Bruxan. 
That's always funny to me. Um, I think that nothing like charms me more than katakana and like loan words and the fact that it's like okay the japanese language and a lot of asian languages as well are so different mm. from european languages and beyond and so trying to use your own alphabet to interpret words as spoken in another language it, it always sounds so fascinating and so hilarious at the same time you know like um like what, what were you talking what were you telling me about when we were playing apex like a year ago fast kitchen that's just a japanese thing that they shorten things mm-hmm like fast or kitchen becomes fucking yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, there's also but, but they do that with everything like uh, like original songs um original kyoku they just mm-hmm. say ori kyoku mm-hmm. or like when we were in japan and we were talking about how the full name for mcdonald's is makuru do norutsu but so a lot of it's so long a lot of them say makudo makudo or makudo. Ma- maku maku that's yeah, so cute it, it depends on the region maku. Uh, different regions call it different things <laughs> or uh, what's another example uh like uh, family mato like you know the kind of combini mm-hmm. they just say famima famima that's so cute famima or 711 they just say 7 seven eleven <laughs> and uh, basket robins is 31 <laughs> <laughs> why is it 31 because uh, like the, they have the 31 highlighted in the br ah. so it looks like 31 plus it's 31 different flavors isn't it i'm going to make a battle royale game and i'm going to have a giant 31 on the map <laughs> and there'll be the 31 highlighted in the BR. I get it. <laughs> Whenever somebody say BR instead of Battle Royale, all I think of is the Battle Rifle from Halo. <laughs> God. Team BRs. I want to play Halo again. Did you ever play Halo Reach? Oh, yeah. With your friends in, on Forge mode and just, and just spawn in a bunch of tanks? I, mean, like, like, I, I built entire maps in Forge. I, I went like a full nerd mode. I never had the attention span for that. I was I, just, I just, my I, friends, I, we just got our I, controllers I, I, out. I remember, like, you just unblocked your memory. I specifically remembered, I, I, m- made a map like as low down in forge world as i possibly could like where you were like underwater mm-hmm. without hitting the death barrier mm-hmm. and just had every the entire map flooded oh, that's and so I, cool. I just like built it out like i've spent a lot of time like balancing and everything doing weapon spawns and like did 1v1s with my friends there and i, sp- I called it the most cringe name or mm-hmm. cringe name <laughs> cringe <laughs> the most cringe I, th- I thought it called it like Drowned Fortress or something like that. Hey, that's that. pretty. That sounds like a FromSoft level. Like I can imagine in Dark Souls. The Sunken Fortress, maybe, but like Drowned. The Drowned Fortress. That, okay, that does kind of sound like a Minecraft map. Yeah. The Drowned in yeah, Minecraft. Yeah, yeah. I think it sounds pretty cool, personally. But you know, to each their own. I think that I think that this novelist I, I, has I, a knack for names. No, I, I, like um, I, I was proud of it. Like I, I put a lot of effort into that thing. Like if, if I were to scour through my old file share on mm-hmm. like an old Microsoft account, I. Pr- probably find it you know you know what i really miss thinking about the xbox i really miss like scouring the xbox 360 or the xbox live store for random obscure indie games and just seeing what they were like but Be- before minecraft was ported to console the first one fortress it came to, craft fortress craft yeah with the with the guns and the dragons coming out all over the place total miner as well was really did you ever play total miner no total miner is fucking scary so it's a really cheap kind of Minecraft knockoff, but there are some parts of it that it does interestingly well to the point where it feels very like backroomsy, like liminal spacey mm-hmm. kind of way. Um, it's so the characters have no animations; they just sort of glide around, and you sort of you and, it, and just like Minecraft, you mine trees and you do that. But the thing about Minecraft, there's the depth limit, so it goes like I think now it goes like 128 blocks down, and you can build 256 blocks up. Total miner thousands of layers underground to the point where there are portals you can find that will teleport you tens of thousands of blocks into the earth it keeps going and going and going and going and the enemies you find down there get more and more fucked up and creepy the further you go i remember um kind of reminds me of that one movie the descent yeah i still need to watch the descent oh you haven't seen i've never seen the descent is that the one about them going into the cage i heard it's really good design looks so good that you think that they shot it on location. Cave, sto- cave stories fuck me up so oh, much. It's cave, you've, cave. you've seen the video about um, Floyd Collins, right? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Ma- man in cave. Yeah. Oh my god. That visual of him, of like, like someone people, squeezing like, through the trees. Having freeze. to empty their lungs to get their That's I, 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 I don't want to think about it. I oh, would god. never... I would never. That, 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 that's why they called it the turnaround room before you get because to the squeeze because everyone sweat. sees it and turns around and goes home. Yeah, I. Uh, oh, somebody mentioned the Nutty Putty Cave. The Nutty. Oh, which which is the Nutty Putty Cave? Uh, that, that's the one where like he. 
he w- was like convinced to like keep going, and then he got stuck. Oh, was this the guy who got stuck upside down? Yes. <sighs> and they just had to seal him inside because they could, they could not get him out. Like, have you seen pictures of people like going through those things when you just just see like their legs stand? Like, I don't. Is like is the is the adrenaline kick really that worth it? I don't. I don't, I don't know. No, I, I, oh, it, it, like go skydiving or something, please. Yeah, like at least go something that you know. It just going, especially going down there like by yourself with like not proper equipment. Like you are. You are just gonna die, and caves are so scary because of stuff like bad air. You know that's why. That's why. In and, and also, like, if something mm-hmm. goes wrong, if you have like, because humans are terrible, like, judges of their own abilities sometimes, and like, will like put themselves in situations that they really cannot get out of. Because if you go far enough with that stuff, in order to, for somebody to save you, they have to jeopardize their own safety, and like sometimes that's just not feasible. So that's sometimes with per- so I like don't blame a person risk- for not wanting to do that. And then, yeah. yeah, and like a rescue mission just basically becomes impossible at that point. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, really relaxing. So, if anyone's trying to go to sleep to this stream, very relaxing subject. Yeah, so for everybody. Sorry about this, like claustrophobia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Content warning. <laughs> Content warning. Cla- claustrophobic discussions. I'm not claustrophobic. But that, uh, but that hurts. That I'm, physically hurts. I'm not claustrophobic to the point. Like I know some people that they can, uh, like even like sitting like in a really cramped uh, like airplane. It just freaks them out. Yeah, it freaks them out. For me, that uh, uh, that doesn't really do much. But once uh, one of my friends or a couple of my friends jokingly like rolled me up in like a carpet, oh. and I when I could not move my arms or legs like, like freaked f- out. from my side, I was like, guys, I'm freaking out. You have to unroll me right mm-hmm. right now. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't blame you for that. I once had a thing where I was at a family get together, and one of my, one of my, um, my aunts had like this. Had like this very young. Um, uh, one of so he would have been, he would have like he would have been like my cousin, like my much younger cousin. And at one point, like uh, like I was just I was just sort of you know you know how you know when there's like a very hyperactive kid just kind of playing around with them you know making sure they're entertained and stuff. At one point, he was surprisingly strong. He kind of pushed me onto the floor, got a pillow, and sat on my face, and I couldn't breathe. And I don't think anyone really noticed. And there were, and I was trying to get him off of me, and it took me a good like twenty twenty five seconds to get off while I just had to hold my breath. And uh, the, I think that's the, that, that's one of the that's some of the closest I've come to to dying because nobody like noticed that something was going wrong and I think he was just being really loud and so when I was like I didn't like the pyro from TF2 I was like nobody heard you know and so eventually I just kind of managed kind to of, throw him off of me but still kind of uh, sad like how many times I've come close to dying <laughs> like, because you mentioned that I remember another time when I was in in a bathhouse in one of the swimming pools and I there was uh, you know how in some of the more shallow pools they have these like uh, Flo- uh, floating uh, things like uh, like mattresses that they, mm-hmm. like people can play on on and whatnot. And they had one that was super wide, mm-hmm. and I was just diving, like seeing how far I could swim and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And uh, because I was like trying how, how far I could go, like I decided to go up. Like when when I'm just like okay, I'm running out of air, so I'm about to surface. I hit my head. I'm under, like, square in the middle underneath one of those giant floaties, and I cannot surface because I'm stuck underneath it. And naturally, I start to panic, and instead of swimming out from underneath, I try to keep going up through the thing, and it doesn't work because That's somebody so is sitting on it. That's so scary. And I don't remember exactly what happened, but I remember eventually being able to surface in, if it just, like, floated far enough or if they just somebody moved it out of the way but like I was I, I, I was close to like passing out like, I, like I, I've, I've almost died so many times it's kind of scary that means that it's your it, your your fate is to live your destiny is to keep living yeah, they're, they're, it's not your time I guess not it's not your time yikes forever Yikes! Forever. Have I? Have I? I've, I've almost died a bunch of times as well. Um, something non. Hmm. Look at my face. Uh, 
freaking out right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't need to bring up Tokugawa, guys. Come on, that's still a sore spot. <laughs> oof. Oof, oof, oof. Oofy doofy. Oofy spoopish. Uh, I'm trying to think of other times. Like, I, I've been hospitalized, but, like, that, that was just like. I, I, I guess I could have almost died because of the doctor leaving me on a table for six hours mm. so, the what yeah like I had an a- appendix thing oh. and like I just like fell in, apart in the shower and like because of the pain and like they brought me to the hospital and mm. le- left me on a table like did some like test and like, examined me a little bit while I was like laying there screaming on a the table then the doctor left six hours passed and then it comes back eventually what? and it's just like oh sorry I had to do a little bit of surgery I'm just like and no one else surgery and I'm just like what like my appendix could have burst at <gasps> that time like six hours of just writhing and screaming in pain oh like, my it was unreal, god unrelenting hey you, they, you to, I mean you know I'm sorry you went through that oh my god six hours on that I, 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 th- I think like the word I've actually been touch wood surprisingly lucky with a lot of medical stuff like I've I've touched wood, never broken a bone, um, uh, and all of that kind of stuff. And I, that, that's like the one superstition I completely, I completely like, can't get out of my head. I will always say, "Oh, this bad thing has never happened to me." I always have to find wood and touch it. I don't know, but um, I know people that knock on wood. Yeah, it's something like that. But uh, there's the story I've told Chad. Have I told you the story of the time that I flew off my bike? No, but the the only thing I remember is like the. The zip line. Oh, the zip line. That was funny. I didn't get seriously hurt from that. Like, I could have died, but I, I finessed it. I was really good. Yeah, no, I finessed it. I, I was on a zip line, and this um, and this m- guy much bigger than me was like, mate, I'm going to I'm gonna push you. How far do you want to go? And I was and I just get adrenaline really fast. And he was like, yeah? And I was like, yeah, just do it as fast as you can, as fast as you can. Vroom! I really underestimated how fucking strong this man was. I just hit it. And this was a big zip line really 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 big this park is pretty huge and like the play apparatus is big by comparison and so it hits the far stopper and i just like rotate 180 degrees straight up into the sky and i am like a good sort of 14 meters i think up in the air 14 for um no like like tall like maybe i don't know how long is a meter it's like that this is a meter that's a meter roughly I would, I would say like a good 20, 25 meters in the sky. No, you would have died. No, but I didn't drop from there. So what happened was I went up that high and I realized I'm going to die. And I held on and it went back down. And then right as it was about to get to the bottom, I just quickly dropped off when I was at its lowest point. And I managed to like, it was still really hurt, but I lived. Yeah. But Maybe it wasn't that high. Yeah, but like, it could have like four high. meters probably. Four meters? No. But way, way, way far, way farther than that. Like, this ceiling is, like, three, three and a half. Three and a half? Oh, my God. Yeah, so much higher than that. Really? That was, like, where... The, How did you not I'd die from that? One meter up from that is where the zip wire ended, and the string, like, the seat from so the zip like wire it, went it, all... It, it, so like imagine that's the end of the zip it. Line. Imagine that's the end of it. I just... The thing hit, and then up like that and it was like so, 180 degrees in the sky so like the the zip line was just it did not go along the ground it was like raised up mm-hmm. oh okay then that makes sense essentially yeah so it was like way up in the I, I would say uh, let's say 8 meters I think up in the sky and I just sort of let go when I was at the lowest and that was like at a plague I... yeah it's a big one it was a really big one what yeah 8 meters pretty sure anyway oh yeah we got a slight ping but oh. <laughs> we've messed up our um our like audio devices, so we didn't hear that. Congratulations, guys! You enjoy enjoy the Slack ping. I I woke up to I, I panicked. I woke up to ten Slack pings this morning, um, and none of them were bad. Like it was all just sort of normal updates and stuff. But I've never had that many overnight, so I was like, Yeah, there, did there, I do something? <laughs> yeah, there's some times when I've woken up to fourteen Slack pings, and I'm just like, Oh God! I'm like, oh, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> Riku does me, please. Whatever I said, I didn't mean it. I was, I was, I was, I was fooling. I, I was, uh, I was playing. Have I ever broken a horn? No, no. These things are too strong. You, they, they, you, 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 you train. I saw, an, I saw a meme someone made of someone from one of the characters from Ed, Ed, and Eddie, 
like holding something he said if it's yellow it's a banana and they edited it so it's all of my horns and they just said you are a banana and oh, you just took a bite out of it have and they then, done that with shoe uh oh they should have done that with shoe yeah <laughs> I think it's because when they bite it, it's just a crunch, like there's a yellow rock that they're eating, and I guess that would probably be the, the consistency and texture of my horns if you just broke them off. <laughs> I wonder what they're made of. I don't know. Isn't it like... It might be bone. Yeah, like wouldn't it be the same consistency as bone? Bone, but it kind of stretches through my skin. How, do, how does it work with reindeers? I don't know. Well, reindeers, it grows through, and then, or moose, for example, every year, once a year, they'll kind of go like, and then the horns will just fall out. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah, with moose, their antlers just disappear and fall off, and then they just keep walking, you know, and then their horns grow back. Hmm. The more you know. Yeah. I heard it was like, it, for some athletes, like, it was an illegal way of, like, augmenting your growth, like, like a performance-enhancing drug was called deer antler spray. Where it was like a spray made from, a, a, like a solution from deer antlers, and if you sprayed it under your tongue, apparently you would like, it was like a steroid, basically, That's which crazy. was really bizarre to me. <laughs> I remember I used to listen like, to this one the podcast. They kept talking about deer, deer antler spray in a funny the people, way. The 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 amount of lengths that people go to to like cheat in like sports are crazy because like yeah. one thing I've heard is like they, like they get more blood. <laughs> Yeah, like they, they like a, like a tick. No, 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 no. Like they, they sort of like, I don't, I don't know if it's their own blood or if they like find like, like donated blood, and they like get that, like somehow like into their system. Like I don't know exactly how it works, and as a result, like the blood that's in their like system can carry more oxygen. Yeah, blood doping. It's a thing. What the fuck? Yeah, like as a result, they get like their, the blood in their system can like carry more oxygen, like enhances their like physical attributes and uh, abilities I gotta get some more blood <laughs> yeah more blood equals more oxygen <laughs> more blood <laughs> keep injecting me with more blood that sounds like an like a like a mad scientist supervillain way of augmenting your physical performance you know what if you had erectile dysfunction and you kind of like just stuck some extra blood down there I don't think that works <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's probably tried it. <laughs> Someone from Florida. <laughs> it's always Florida. It's always Florida. I was looking through Florida Man headlines again for a bit of a blast. I remember when that video leaked online of somebody like biting the head of a hamster and yeeting it over, and yeeting it over oh, the, that's, the head. That's horrible. I know. That's awful. horrible. Awful. I prefer the story about the guy who fought off 12 cops with one hand while jerking off with the other hand. Yeah. What? Yeah. Florida man did that. And then, what else was it? Florida man arrested for walking out of a Walmart with an entire working meth lab in his pants. Working. Working. <laughs> because if it's not working, then it's not illegal. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but it was in his pants. He was like, some, he was like Inspector Gadget. It must have like looked at Breaking Bad and was like, I can do that. I can do that. That's one of my favorite bits from Breaking Bad, um, is when he meets, like, the... He meets, like, these two guys in a store, and he can tell that they're getting all of the supplies to go and make some some product of their own. And he goes up to them, and he's like, these guys are amateurs. And his ego is so huge that he walks up, he's like, what are you doing? You need to go to different stores, buy it piecemeal, it attracts less attention. And this guy just looks at him like... Oh. And he kind of turns around and runs away. And then he walks out to the van where these two are packing up and he just walks up and this really cool song starts playing and he just says, stay out of my territory. And it's like, shit, you know. I love Breaking I love Breaking Bad for that because it's amazing how well it manages to create a completely unlikable asshole, but you still root for him mm. throughout the entire thing. Like, he goes from in season one being kind of lovable in his own way to just becoming a, you know. He goes up the deep A complete end. villain. But you still root for him. It's st he's still the main character. Jesse, Jesse, we have to cook. Jesse, I know exactly what you're talking. Jesse, what the fuck are you talking about? Y'all missed the white Balenciaga, bitch. <laughs> What's that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's one of those. It's one of those memes where it's like all of the AI generated images of like characters from Harry Potter wearing all of these designer clothes, and it has like this techno music in the background and. Voldemort is like is like is like Balenciaga is my past, my present, and my future, and it shows him like wearing some kind of super sleek but very surreal like black coat or something like that. 
Avada Balenciaga. Uh, I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. Uh, we're starting to get a little tired, and I think that uh, our conversations have run its course. But thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you so much, Ike, for joining me. This has definitely been a really fun experience. Just get to shoot the shit. Um, I'm so, so glad you enjoyed the caviar. The caviar was Bomb. Really, really glad he enjoyed it. So we're going to end there. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm not going to go to the ending screen because I know that most likely uh, I've left my really loud theme song on there. So just in case any of you guys are about to get to sleep, um, I will just end it here. But thank you very much, everyone, for coming. And we'll see you tomorrow when we decide which game we're going to play. So thank you very much for coming, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.